Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all rise as we present the South Carolina Army National Guard under the direction of Sergeant Brett Cobb and accompanied by Marine veterans B.G. James and Bullet Bob Armstrong for the singing of our national anthem as performed by Morning Star recording artist Greenville, South Carolina's own Joe Trusty. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the This is a difficult time for the United States. It's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. Booker T, I've tried to be a man about this. I've tried to apologize to you. We can make an effort to understand and to comprehend. Kong comes in peace. Kong do not wish to hurt anyone. And replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand and love. It is not shame that you're dealing with, Chris. It's guilt. To tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. Well, I'm not a I did not have sexual relations with that woman. What I did at Final Resolution was an accident, and you know it. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. I Iraq have ended. Iraq have ended. I don't trust anybody. This is personal. Hipping it, skipping it, skipping it, dude. I'm going to beat the living hell out of Rob Lou. Your own stepbrother <laughs> is going to take barbed wire and use it to rip and cut and slash and tear your flesh off of your bones. Was a heel, he'd be in Team 3D. I want to make you, in the angle cage match for the title, the special guest enforcer. The fact remains that I am an Olympic gold medalist, TNA World Heavyweight Champion, and I am better than you. These allegations are false. false. Our career will end at barbed fire. Massacre. In this difficult time, it's perhaps well to ask what direction we want to move in. We can make an effort to understand and to comprehend and replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand and love. To tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world.
Wrestling presents Against All Odds. Welcome everyone to Greenville, South Carolina, where tonight in Against All Odds, four championships on the line, including in our opening match, B.G. James, and there you see him, and his father, Bullet Bob Armstrong, to challenge A.J. Styles and Tom Cone for the TNA Tag Team titles. And what an electric atmosphere we have here in Greenville at the Milo Center as the challengers are joined by the troops from the South Carolina Army National Guard. And there you see B.G. James. Yes, and his 67-year-old father, Bullet Bob Armstrong. They are set to do battle in our opening tag title match. They're soaking it in. Let's hear what B.G. has to say. Now then, in honor of all the men and women in uniform, not just here, but abroad, we got three words for you. God bless America! successfully work together if they're going to defend the tag team titles tonight. And as AJ Styles and Tom Cole, the defending TNA title holders, make their way towards the six-sided ring here at Against All Odds, we've got to touch on what went down this past Thursday night on Impact. We saw AJ Styles paired off with Kurt Angle. We saw Tomko aligned with Christian Cage. No question in my mind, Don West, if Styles and Tomko, if they're going to overcome that dissension, they're going to have to do so. They're going to have to get on the same page if they want to leave Greenville, South Carolina, if they want to leave against all odds and still the TNA Tag Team title holder. Well, you can see the dissension as they're walking down the ramp. You can see the disgust in Tomko's face as AJ's berating them. If there's been any doubt by anybody, about how prepared BT games and Bullet Bob Armstrong are. Well, I think you saw that when you saw them walking out with the soldiers and you realize their background, they are prepared, and AJ's got the mic and wants to say something. Hold on, hold on! Look, look, look. Tom Go. This may not be the time, it may not be the place, but you ain't called me back in three weeks. You said you wanted to be your own man, do your own thing. That's fine, I was cool with that. But then you go inside with Christian Cage? Look, I just need to know what's up. I need an explanation right now, tonight, before we start this match. This is what you need to know, AJ. You see that right there? That's representing the best wrestling family there has ever been. And besides that, they're backed up by the Marines. Now you need to get your head up straight and concentrate on this match or we're gonna lose these belts. You understand that? Now get it straight. Tomko understands the situation that they're in. AJ needs to get his head on straight. They need to be on the same page if this is gonna be a successful title defense. Ladies and gentlemen, let's Ladies send and gentlemen, the, the opening contest live from Greenville, South Carolina. On pay-per-view is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA Tag Team Championship of the World. Introducing, first of all, the challengers standing in the corner to my left at a combined weight of 450 pounds from Marietta, Georgia. 
They are the challengers, the team of BT James and the Bullet Bob Armstrong. And introducing, standing in the corner to my right, they weighed in this morning at a combined weight of 502 pounds. They are the current reigning and defending TNA Tag Team Champions of the World, the team of Taco and the Phenomenal AJ Stars. The Prince of Phenomenal. AJ Styles and Tom Coat to defend those tag team titles. The senior official from TNA, Rudy Charles, holds high above his head and displays to the crowd. And Don, it is an electric, it is a raucous crowd here in Greenville, South Carolina at the Bilo Center for Against All Odds. Oh, you can just feel this excitement. And, and right now, something special could happen to start off the show when you realize every belt is on the line tonight and we're going to start it off with the tna tag team championship and you know what i was saying earlier about how ready bg james and bullet bob armstrong are and how they've got the support of the national guard and the marines and the military here in this building tonight and they know there's dissension between tomko and aj styles and you can just see that look at tomko's face he keeps trying to get aj styles focused on what's at hand. They also have the support, Don West, of Kip James from VKM, from the Voodoo Kin Mafia. At a time when we all expected that there would be dissension problems between VKM, once BG announced that when he took that Feast for Fire tag team title shot, that he was on the outlook for a new tag team partner. Yes, it's his father, it's his role model, it's a 67-year-old man, but it's Bullet Bob Armstrong, and boy, are they ready to go to battle. Oh, boy, AJ running in place and gets death for that big right hand. I was talking with BG James, and he said it, it is a dream come true, and he knows this may be his only chance ever to work with his father in that ring. They're gonna give everything they've got, hold nothing back. Don't let age, don't let age determine any of your thoughts about this match, because when you see that man in the ring, you'll realize that's as tough as anybody you've ever met, and I'm talking about Bullet Bob Armstrong. Touched on it during the taglines. We're gonna reiterate it one more time. Yes, both father and son attended Marine Boot Camp 30 years apart, respectively. 1957 for Bullet Bob, 1987 for BG James. In the exact same location, Paris Island, right here in the state of South Carolina. AJ gets knocked on his butt and tags in Tomko. Well, that just shows you the, the strength that Bullet Bob has. I mean, he just jacked his jaw with that slap, and it caught AJ Styles off guard. I'm actually looking up here, and AJ's checking to see if he's got a loose tooth. As you can see, Tomko, the concern on his face, he realizes that these two are motivated beyond anything that he can see to prepare for this. And think about it, Mike. AJ Styles and Tomko, their situation just keeps getting worse and worse week by week. You know, this looks like, oh, I was gonna say, it looks like a physical mismatch between Tomko and Bullet Bob, but nobody has more heart than Bullet Bob Armstrong. Slap to the face, Tomko turns it around, but look at Bob Armstrong unleash. Chops in the corner, smart to tag in, BG. Well, they're gonna have to have quick tags. They're have gonna to. have to work together like this the entire match. They cannot let one of them be out in that ring too long, or it is gonna be harmful for this team. But right now, they seem to have that game plan in hand, and I like how Bullet Bob went right after Tomko. That was his way of showing he's not intimidated by his size, his strength, or the fact that he's wearing the gold. And you know he's not gonna back down under any circumstances as BG unleashes the offense. The boot that time really rocked Tomko, who gets back up to his feet, and you'll notice here the experience cutting off the ring. Tomko goes face first into that top turnbuckle courtesy of BG, and then the tag into the bullet, and there's the bullet with that big shot. The one thing about it, BG James and Bullet Bob are gonna have to try to make this match end in their time limit. I mean, they can't, the longer this match goes, Mike, what I'm trying to say is, uh -oh. it's gonna go to the advantage of Tomko and AJ Styles, and now Tomko's showing that strength and showing no mercy on Bullet Bob. Power slam, plants him in the middle of the ring as we see AJ try and slide in and go for the cover, and Tomko pulls him off. Oh, yes. Tom. Well, I'm just gonna say Tomko right now. AJ, look at that, he dives in anyway and goes for the cover, and that's not gonna help things with those two. Not gonna help things at all. 
Tag team titles on the line in the opener. And remember, in our main event, it's the man on the right side of your screen, Kurt Angle. Look how attentive he is watching this. You see wife Karen JB as well back there. Kurt to defend the TNA World Heavyweight title later tonight against the challenge of Christian Cage with Samoa Joe as the special enforcer. And, well, you can see there that, that Angle is so attentive, and, and Karen obviously wants to get his attention with something. Well, she's trying to get a good word with him, but you know, after last Thursday night, Kurt Angle still upset by Thompson showing that allegiance that he did to Christian Cage at the end when Kurt Angle and AJ were just beating on Christian Cage. And I think he's very interested in what happens in this matchup and how it's going to play out in his title match later tonight against Christian Cage. Great point as we see BG come in. Referee Rudy Charles steps up and forces him to head back out to the apron. Well, you can just see the concern etched on the face of B.G. James while his father, Bullet Bob, was on the receiving end of that beatdown from Styles and Tomko. Well, this is what they can't afford to have happen. They can't afford to have Bullet Bob Armstrong kept on their side of the ring. He has got to find a way to escape. He's got to find a way to get a tag into B.G. James. That's the only way these guys are going to be able to make this work. They have got to wear down Tomko and AJ somehow, and they're not going to do it if one of them stuck. But look at Bullet Bob. Look at that determination, that fire as he gets to his feet, and it's just amazing the strength that he has, just the intestinal fortitude that he has. Armstrong back up to his feet. That right hand connected directly to the jaw of Tomko. Rocked him momentarily, but then Tomko returns the favor with a back elbow to the chest. And, and you've noticed from the second that Tomko has come into the ring, he's had a running commentary with BG James. Well, Tomko, I think, realizes that how vulnerable they are right now, especially with the way that him and AJ Styles can't get along. And he wants to end this, and he'll do it by showing no mercy. He doesn't care it's Bullet Bob, he doesn't care he's 67, he doesn't care about any of that. And I think he feels, oh, you saw where he went to, for the kill shot, that running boot, and Bullet Bob able to get out of the way of time. And I'm telling you, he hit his foot wrong on the top of that rope. And that may be bad for Tom but there's he's in pain, and now look at PG. Someone to take it out. Oh, he's taking out on both of them. Shot for Tomko, takes him down to the arena floor. Quick reversal by Styles, shoots him off into the ropes. Swing and a miss with the clothesline. Watch the series of lefts. Here comes the right. Oh, oh nice shot. Punctuated with that big right hand directly between the eyes, and then he drops the knee. That familiar pattern of offense, followed by the cover. Tomko slides in to make the save. Well, Tomko with everything he had. Now look at Tomko, though. And look at BG able to counter this as he's got around the waist of Tomko with that elbow by Tomko. Just so strong, and here's the teamwork. BG gets out of the way, and the shot hits Tomko instead. Springboard into that flying forearm shot, took out his own partner. Here comes the pump handle. He's got him up. Oh, it sets him down. Here he goes. New champs. One, One two. two. Oh, AJ Styles just in time. Just that close. Oh, we almost saw the dream realized for BG James and Bullet Bob Armstrong, his father. Meanwhile, you see outside, Tomko beating down Bullet Bob, and BG going to try and come out and help his old man. Well, Tomko just taking matters into his own hands. He just going to try to injure Bullet Bob Armstrong. AJ going up. Oh, what a wicked oh. kick to the knee. He just drilled him. You can hear it. You can hear it right here in Greenville, South Carolina. What a shot, Mike. Did you hear that? It was almost like BG's knee popped. Oh, he did. He caught him right with the knee. BG, I mean, right into the knee with that drop kick. Oh, look at BG. He, he can't even put any strength on it. Oh, AJ Styles knows he's got it now. Oh, and this is a serious situation for the challengers. Without the young legs of BG James. Uh oh. The, there it is. The tornado plex. Double team. One, though. two. Cover. Oh, Tumbo man. Out the champs retain. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners and still TNA World Tag Team Champions, Tumco and the Prince of Phenomenal, BG Styles. The BKF partner of BG James, Kip James, came running, came sliding into the ring to check on the condition of his voodoo kin mafia tag team partner. This does not look good for BG James. This is a serious situation. Well, I mean, you could just see it from the moment he kicked him. I mean, that drop kick caught the knee flush. Look at the pain in BG's face. And it took something like that to bring these guys down. They came out here with heart. Kip James knows how important this was for BG to, to win this title with his father and he's coming out showing his support. You got admired for that. Bullet Bob knows how bad his son hurt. This was one of those situations where I don't believe that AJ Styles and Tomko necessarily ever got on the same page, but they took advantage of a situation. 
That springboard drop kick by Styles directly into the knee of BG. Boy, it took him down in a hurry, and they hit that double team move, the tornado flex. The next thing you know, the champs keep the goal. Well, Tom goal. What a move on his part to be fighting with Bullet Bob Armstrong outside, able to get him into that rail so that Bullet Bob is not able to get into the ring to break up the pin attempt. And after the shot to the knee, BG had no recourse. And the pin after the tornado flex. Just like you said, it wasn't pretty for AJ Styles and Tom Bell, but they got the job done. This had all the makings of a feel-good moment. It did. The troops here in attendance in Greenville, South Carolina, supporting the Marines, BG James, and Bullet Bob Armstrong, but you can't deny the effort that the challengers put into it. But that knee injury just too severe. Now, let's send it to the back. JB standing by with the angles, Kurt and Karen. I don't know what else to do. I have done everything you have asked me to do. And you know what, Kurt? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. And you know what? It's not even, shut up! It's not even that you don't listen. All you care about is your TNA world title. And you know what, Kurt? I am tired of it. I'm tired of it. All you care about, AJ, Tonko, who's siding with who? Who's screwing who? I am over it! When is the last time, Kurt, when is the last time we have spent time together? When is the last time you would have done anything romantic for me? Romantic? Romantic? You're gonna hit me with this now? You talk about quality time? You have quality time every time you're in my presence. Every single second you're in my presence. I'll tell you what, why don't you just go to concession stand? All right, buy some Midol. And then, as a matter of fact, take your friend PMS with you. Now PMS. go. PMS, you know what, buddy? One day, you're gonna realize it, and it's gonna be too late! Such a bitch. Wow, what a situation back in the Angle family locker room. And hello once again, everyone, from ringside. Mike Tanay, joined by Don West. Welcome to Greenville, South Carolina. Welcome to Against All Odds. You know, Kurt Angle really has his work cut out for him tonight. TNA World Title Defense against Christian Cage, Samoa Joe, the Special Enforcer, and at the same time, Karen Angle putting on a full court press. Well, Kurt Angle needs to look at the calendar. It's Valentine's Day coming up, and you know how women can be at Valentine's Day. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, let's tell you exactly what we have in store for you tonight at Against All Odds on Pay-Per-View. Well, it's Case versus Case. It's winner take all. Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner, Maple Leaf Muscle Petey Williams, possible two title shots in the win. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the true definition of a grudge match. What an opportunity here for Booker T. It's going to be Robert Roode one-on-one -on -one against Booker T as he tries to avenge the shattered jaw to wife Charmel. And let's face it, the X Division is in jeopardy. Team 3D and Johnny Devine take on the Motor City Machine Guns and Black Machismo J Lethal. You know the stipulations, but if the Guns and Lethal win, Team 3D got to get under 275. Are you ready for violence personified? Nothing that you've ever seen is like Barbed Wire Massacre. The Monster Abyss is set to settle all the dysfunctional family problems against Judas Macias. It's the TNA Knockout Championship. The challenger, ODB. The champion, Awesome Kong. Who comes out with the belt? And ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to miss our main event matchup tonight. It is for the gold, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Christian Cage in the role of the challenger. Kurt Angle, the defending champion. And there is the special enforcer, Samoa Joe. And Don, I need to get your comment on the role of Samoa Joe as the special enforcer tonight in the title match. Well, it's one of those situations where if he calls it down the line, he's the perfect man to have out there to keep it an even keel. But you gotta wonder, with that history with Kurt and what happened, what's gonna happen? Ladies and gentlemen, up next here at Against All Odds, it's the TNA Knockouts in action. Let's take a preview of Tracy Brooks and Peyton Banks. It is official, Ms. Brooks. You are fired! And a broken jaw is gonna seem like a little splinter once Robert Root Inc. is through with you tonight. Every single day, you verbally abused me, and now you wanna hit me? Does that get you off? Physically abusing women? You have a life only people can dream of. You know what, none of that matters. Because at the end of the day, Robert, you're just a prick named Bob. Shut your kick hole, you fat stick! You had the opportunity to watch 
side by side with Robert Roode, and you blew it. So now, Tracy, it's time for you to find out that it pays to be rude. Oh, it's that stalker, that psycho woman that's always down here. And look at this. Wait, she comes in the crowd and she's attacking Miss Brooks. She's got Miss Let Brooks. Let me introduce you to your replacement, Miss Peyton Banks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a TNA knockout grudge match. Scheduled for one fall, introducing first from Wall Street in Manhattan, New York, representing Rubber Root Incorporated, Peyton Banks. Well, to me, the jury is still out when it comes to the in-ring ability of one Peyton Banks. We saw her recently on Impact in a six-person mixed tag match where she squared off with Tracy Brooks, but wasn't really wrestling, that was a fight. from St. Mary's, Ontario, Canada, Tracy Brooks. Well, this is all about ending a nightmare for Tracy Brooks when you think about Peyton Banks stalking her week after week, night after night, and then when she blindsided her, hit her with the chairs, hit her in the back of the head. This is a chance to get rid of everything in her mind. If she takes care of Peyton Banks, she can wash away all that filth when she was involved with Robert Roode. Think about all the crap that Tracy Brooks has had to put up with. Going back to those constant verbal and physical beratings from Robert Roode as, oh, oh my, Peyton Banks and Tracy meet face to face and nose to nose, and there's a slap and you can just feel it when Tracy nailed her and then spears her right into the corner. This is her opportunity to gain that revenge. Well, you talked about the question mark and the wrestling ability of Peyton Banks. Well, you know, Tracy Brooks has it. Look at her, she's just going with a vengeance. I asked her what her game plan was. She said simple, I'm just gonna pretend that Peyton Banks is Robert Roode and take on everything I got on her. And she's doing just that. I don't think we have to worry about Tracy Brooks putting it into reverse at any point in this match. Full speed ahead, but then Peyton Banks quickly turns it around on her, grabbed her by the hair, tossed her down to the mat, and then from the mat, series of shots, right hands, and then throttling, blatantly choking Tracy Brooks right in front of referee Andrew Thomas, who pulls her off. Oh, she started that series off by breaking the eyes, and it just sent Tracy Brooks in the wrong. Oh, nice spear, and she goes right after her. Now look at this, she realizes that Peyton Banks is gonna fight. That's what she's gonna do. She's not wrestling, she's gonna fight. So Tracy Brooks says, if you wanna brawl, I'll brawl right with you, and they go right out of the ring. Yeah, after all the nonsense that Tracy had to put up with from Robert Roode, wow. as she just took her and tackled her down, we saw Peyton Banks as Robert Roode's number one fan. Boy, she's a real stalker to me. What was it that you said? Single white female? Wasn't that ring true? Boy, she did. I mean, every week she looked more and more and more like Tracy Brooks. And like she was trying to become her. And now Tracy Brooks just taking out that frustration. What a shot into the rail. What a shot. I mean, she threw her on the concrete earlier. She is just beating Peyton Banks up right now. Knife edge chop as she was positioned. Oh, against that steel safety rail. And then another one. Oh man, you can hear that echo throughout the arena. Well, Peyton Banks is on her own because we know Robert Root got his hands full later on tonight as he has to face Booker T. And and that's just Robert Roode. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about the girl that he's with. But boy, Tracy Brooks. Oh! Oh, oh nice move by Peyton Banks. Able to trip her right into the steel steps. Duly effective. She avoided the contact from Tracy Brooks. And then Tracy went crashing right into the steel. Peyton Banks back up to her feet. Unleashes a forearm shot. And another one with authority. Going to send her now oh. back first into the steel. What a shot. She saw her just crumple to the ground. He can turn that quickly, one shot into the steel steps, and you don't have a clue where you're at, and Peyton Banks can sense it, she feels it, and she knows. Oh, Tracy Brooks, everything she had, all that momentum, gone in an instant. Opportunity now for Peyton Banks to take advantage of a weakened Tracy Brooks, first with the boots, and then big right hand. Well, the crowd here roaring for well, they, Tracy to get back into this matchup. Well, they appreciate a good fight, that's what this has become, Mike. This is just two people that hate each other, just trying to beat the living tar out of each other. Look at these kicks, one shot after the other. I mean, and, I mean, nice elbow shot. You got to give her credit. Peyton Banks just throwing them elbows right and left. Oh, rakes the back. Double grudge tonight here against All Odds. Yes, 
not only Robert Roode and Booker T yet to come, but this matchup as well with Peyton Banks, who surprisingly to me, Don, is getting the better of Tracy Brooks. And, oh my God, both knees stabbing right in the back. Here we go. Two. Oh, but Tracy Brooks gets out of it. Man, nice. Nice move right there by Peyton Banks. We didn't see anything like that. We're simply a wrestling move from him if he does that to Tracy Brooks. Right back to those shots, clubbing blows to the back. Tracy momentarily gets back up to her feet. The second that she does, Peyton Banks drives her right back down, got her positioned against that middle row. Well, one thing she's learned from Robert Roode, and that's to be relentless, and she is. She hasn't stopped for a second. She hasn't let up, but look at that. That's the strength of Tracy Brooks as she just reaches down. It gives one last effort to try to turn this thing around, and then she, what a shot. What a knife that's chopped into the chest, and oh, there she goes. One shot, two shots. She's got Peyton Banks reeling in the boot to the face. Comes off the ropes, extends the leg, drives that boot right in to the pretty face of Peyton Banks, and then charges across and puts both knees right in the back. Oh, she did it. She used the rope for leverage. Oh, and there's the clothesline. Almost took her head Here off. Here we go. One, two. Oh, Peyton Banks, though. Reflex action, I'm sure, but got the shoulder off. Now, got that shoulder rolled before Tracy Brooks can put her away. Wait a minute. Tracy headed outside. Tracy gonna go up to the top high risk and Peyton Banks is prepared. She's ready and she cut her off. Very quick move, very cat-like move by Peyton Banks. She waited, waited till Tracy Brooks was vulnerable and then brought her down and now look at her. Just putting those shoulders right into the gut, knocking the wind out, but oh! Oh, she telegraphed it! Here it is! One, two, Tracy Brooks gets the win! Here is your winner! What an effort, but I, you've got to give it to both girls as Peyton Banks showed that she was no pushover for any stretch of imagination, but Tracy Brooks, wow. She got it at the end, able to turn it around. Oh, oh. oh she was overcome with emotion, and then from behind, you saw that cheap shot, that northern lariat, a move that we've seen from Robert Rudon, but it was Peyton Banks with that clothesline from behind. Well, they're not going to stop. I mean, Tracy Brooks pulls her right back in the middle of the ring saying, you want to keep this going? I'll keep it going. And you can see Peyton Banks trying to get out of there with everything she's worth. And there she now gets out of the ring. Trying to get out of there with everything that she wore as well. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next here at Against All Odds, we will preview Petey Williams versus Big Papa Punk Scott Steiner. And then our broadcast colleague, Scott Hudson. Yeah, he's back. He'll talk to the two competitors. chose to trade suitcases with Petey Williams. Petey Williams ended up with the world heavyweight title shot. I captured the title of Maple Leaf Muscle in my hometown of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Have you guys checked out my intercostals lately? Oh, I don't even know what those are. Get off my furniture and get out of my office. And against all odds, it's gonna be you versus Petey Case versus case. Winner take all. Whoever wins the match gets both cases. This represents me skyrocketing and back to the top. Because when I'm world champion, ratings are going to go through the roof. Box office records are going to be set. I've been the X Division champion. And now it's TNA. World title. All the way, baby. All the way. You are a small man trying to make it in a big man's business. See right there, that brain right there is bigger than your arms. But I am Maple Leaf Muscle, the definition of definition. I will get that case back from Petey Williams. Two TNA title shots are on the line as Maple Leaf Muscle Petey Williams takes on Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner in a case versus case match. Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner, Maple Leaf Muscle Petey Williams tonight. It all comes to a head. The revolving cases, well, that ends tonight. And the winner of this one not only gets a shot at the X Division crown, but a shot at the TNA World 
heavyweight title, Petey. Hey, all the games stop here tonight, am I right, Scotty? I mean, who has what case with what in it? I mean, who's getting fired, who's getting voted off the island, all the, I mean, I'm as sick of it as you are, Scotty. And I mean, if you want to put it all on the line tonight, both cases, that's fine by me. I've been training for matches like this since before I was born. I was in my mother's womb doing the crunches. I came out of her doing push-ups. I even snapped my own umbilical cord in half. I am the definition of definition. TNA, totally natural abs. I've won bodybuilding contests all across Canada from BC to PEI to NWT to W dot. Those are my credentials, Scotty. I bet I've even been working out longer than you. Listen here, you pimple popping little punk. While you were going up that little piss ass country you call Canada, I was touring the world with my freaks. Matter of fact, I had more world title matches, defending my world title matches, more than you've had matches. It's obvious you're a fan of mine, but I'm, I'm warning you right now. Do not cop me in the ring tonight. If you do that, I got a little surprise for you. Man, turn it down a bit on the main skid row. I mean, he's just jealous. I mean, tonight is Maple Leaf Muscles night. gentlemen the following contest is scheduled for one fall and the winner gets both cases and both title shots introducing first from Windsor Ontario Canada Maple Leaf Muscle Pete Williams earlier tonight we saw BG James turn in his tag title shot from Feaster Fired two cases remain X Division Championship case TNA World Heavyweight Championship case they're both on the line both go to the winner of this matchup, but the question that remains to be answered, will there even be an X Division after tonight? And his opponent from Detroit, Michigan, Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner! Well, there's no doubt that Scott Steiner, as you see both cases in his hands, has been the inspiration for this resurgence of Petey Williams. Has to be. But you heard Scott Steiner. Don't you copy me. And we know how Petey Williams loves to mimic everything that Big Mama Pump has said to us before saying. He said it. I think he said he looked up to me, but I think he was meaning it about Petey, surely, wasn't he? I can't even I, I can't even repeat what he no, said. I don't either. It was had something to do with smack the uh, you know what out of you. Well, I believe he was you know visualizing Petey Williams at that point. You hope. <laughs> I mean, you heard him. If he copies me, he's going down harder than normal. The intense look on the face, in the eyes, yes. Behind those shades of Big Pop, a pump the genetic freak Scott Steiner. He's not going to be happy. Not going to be happy because the definition of definition, Maple Leaf Muscle, is exactly what he was doing. He was copying him pose for pose. Well, he's not going to be intimidated by Scott Steiner. He's trying to get in inside the head of Big Papa Pump, inside the head of the genetic freak. And, and think about what's at stake here. Yes, it might be just one title shot. Because if Team 3D and Jenny Devine have their way, the X Division is gone for good. But there's a nice consolation prize and that's the TNA World Championship. But if, if somehow Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Gun are able to pull it out against Team 3D and Johnny Devine, then whoever wins this match will have two title shots. True definition of winner takes all as we see the pose down between Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner and yes, P.D. Williams. This is, I was gonna say this is gonna be interesting, Mike just because of how we've watched Petey Williams and how he has just taken everything he can from, from Scott Steiner's career and built himself back up. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always so honored to be around him, but now he's got to take him more on one. Test of strength here, and we see Steiner just completely overpower Williams, but then 
Petey, Maple Leaf Muscle quickly reacts, went for the drop kick to the leg, no effect on Steiner, and the high hip toss takes Petey up and over, and he decides to bail out and take a walk around the ring. I mean, what a hip toss that was. He just sent him flying in the, in the air, and Petey Williams landed on his hip, but now look at Petey Williams. Doing a few sit-ups in the middle of the ring to, to frustrate Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. One advantage Petey Williams has, and he knows it, and that speed, and he's going to try to use it every chance he has. I mean, that's what he's got to do. That's what his game plan has to be. You can't go to a move like this. You can't go to the power game. Close lines off the ropes, having little or no effect, and then number three doesn't go any better for Petey Williams. He gets dropped in his tracks, pump it up. Whoa, he's going to drop it down, and... Uh -oh. uh, I don't know about this. Before the elbow can be dropped, he goes into the patented push-up. And Scott Steiner does so well. And again, though, look at Pitty Williams. He's making Big Papa Pump chase after him. And a nice kick to the gut. A couple of jawbreakers. And then a spin kick caught Steiner completely unaware. The quick cover with the leg hooked and barely a two-count in that by Maple Leaf Muscle on Big Papa Pump. Well, it's obvious he stunned Scott Steiner and he went for the pin, but again, you mentioned it. There he goes. Oh, man, you can't go straight on straight with this guy. That was a belly-to-belly, -belly released, and I mean released, high overhead suplex by Steiner as Boy, these people in Greenville, South Carolina, they've been watching Big Papa Pump for years. Well, they're seeing a legend, and they, it, it's just a great moment for them. Petey Williams right now is in serious trouble. He's kind of stuck up there in a tree of woe, and then he, he got uh -oh. kicked in the head. Now look at this. Steiner pulling back on the chin as his legs are part of the top, but now Petey crumbles to the mat. Oh, just cranking on that chin lock. Almost snapped the neck of Petey Williams. You can see Petey favoring neck and jaw at the same time. And Steiner just relentless, hits into the ring, shoots him off into the ropes, and then decks him again with that Steiner line. Well, here comes the elbow, and this time he hits it. Whoa, now, look at this. You knew it was coming, and that's kind of how it's done, Petey. That's the message he's sending right there. Scott Steiner, under no circumstances, wants to be shown up by Petey Williams, whether it's copying any of his patented poses or moves, or potentially winning the two feaster fire cases that contain the title shots. Oh, look at this. Yep. Oh, man! Ah. There's a belly to belly for you, wow! Again, he released him, that time off the ropes, and Petey Williams just went down with a very bad landing. All the way across the sixth side, and look at that. He's toying with him just pulled him up by the hair, and I believe he knew it would be over, but he wants to send a real message to Petey Williams. You want to get in the ring with me? Well, then you got to face the consequences. Oh, what a Hear that wicked one? knife edge chop. You can just steal it all the way through the by low center. Knife edge chops in the corner. Now he's going to position Maple Leaf Muscle up on the top row. Big Papa Pump, the genetic freak, going to follow up and take him up onto his shoulders. Here comes a fall away slam. Wow. You, it was like time stopped for a moment as he was just falling through the air, and what a shot. Again, he knows he has Petey Williams beat, but again, he pulls the shoulder up on his own so he can inflict more damage. Wow, this is just a lesson that Scott Steiner's given Petey Williams right now. Steiner drops out to the floor, comes out here to the broadcast table, and picks up both of the Feast for Fire cases. He gave you a wicked look, too. I think he was looking at you. What are you talking about? He's got the cases, and now he's going to use them as a weapon as he puts them in, in the turnbuckles there. And now he's got the other one that makes a nice little stall for Petey on the way across. He's going to set the other one up on the other side. Scott Steiner has some strategy here. He's got a game plan, something in mind. He's got those two steel cases wedged on opposite sides of the ring between the top and middle rope. Another chop to the chest just dropped Petey. Let's see what Big Papa Pump will take him in. Slick Johnson standing in front of that one case, blocking Steiner. I don't know what he's going to do with the opposite side, though. Well, he's trying to make sure that Petey, he doesn't send Petey Williams' head crashing through there. And now Scott Steiner focused on him, and that was just what Petey Williams needed. And then he's able to send Scott Steiner into the case. Here he goes. One, two. Oh, man, he almost stole it. And I mean, all that did was get Petey Williams just enough time to recover, and this is a good opportunity for him because he ranks Steiner's bell. Steiner went down like a big oak tree. Gets right back. Did you see him lift him up? And then out of nowhere, the Hurricane Rana by Petey Williams. One, two, oh, close again. 
Now that's using that agility, that's using that athletic ability. It's Petey Williams on the verge of being power bombed down. And here he goes, can he hit him? Oh no, too much for him to hit. The Canadian Destroyer, now look at this. That's the strength of Scott Steiner. Yeah, I'm not sure that he's ever gonna be able to hit that One, Canadian Destroyer. Two. Oh! Whoa! Well, I thought oh, it was over. I, I thought too. it was done. I just, it just so looked like, Steiner. he looked like he was lifeless, but Petey Williams showing what he's made of. And look at this, quick roll, quick up. roll up. So close to Steiner, almost got pinned. And well, that's you gotta time. give Petey Williams credit. He is not stopping for a second, no quit. Here he comes, nice drop kick in the back of the neck. Off that drop toe hold, the hesitation drop kick between the shoulder blades of Steiner. Slingshot in, both knees to the chest, but you notice that Steiner blocked that move temporarily by hooking the top rope. Now Petey's gonna go high risk. Williams headed to the top, here comes Maple Leaf Muscle, look out below. Wow, he knows the tree's about to fall. One, two, he's got it, no he didn't. No, Scott Steiner at the last split second got the shoulder up just in time. No less than four near falls for Maple Leaf Muscle. And how about this? He's going to try and beat him with his own move, the Steiner recliner. Oh, he's got it cinched in. Look at the pain on Scott Steiner's face. But Scott Steiner trying to get to his feet, trying to get the leverage. And he's got it, and he just rushes him back. He slams his back in the turnbuckle. Petey Williams not letting go. Again, the power and strength of Steiner so evident. He's got Petey in trouble now, got him up on the shoulder. Motions to the corner. Petey Williams able to fight it off. Oh, Mike, and a nice kick to the gun. Gonna try for the Tornado DDT. Oh, he hits it. This is it. One, two, oh, man. Scott Steiner's showing many lives here in this match. Well, he just didn't have great weight positioning on that pin attempt, as you see the trickle of blood from the head of Petey Williams on the verge of victory once again. And Steiner, I don't think the referee saw that. That was a low blow by Scott Steiner that doubles over Maple Leaf Muscle. Well, he's in desperation for him. He realizes how close he's been to getting pinned on numerous occasions in this matchup. And he had to do whatever he could to stop it because he couldn't allow Petey Williams to walk out of here in both cases. And now it's his turn to put in the Steiner. Oh, nice counter as he turns around and takes a shot to the head. Did you ever anticipate this kind of a showing from Petey Williams in this match? Oh, and then he caught it with that mule kick low blow and then sent Steiner, big pop up pop, directly into the face for fire case. Can he put him away? Oh, he, what a wicked shot. And Scott Steiner doesn't know where he is. Petey Williams up high, beautiful drop kick. Steiner fell, this is it. If he doesn't take too long, he can go over there and finish it, and he's feeling the emotion. Winner takes all, winner gets. What on minute. earth? Who the, who the hell is that? I have no idea. What the hell is that? She's distracting Petey Williams at once. She, 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 she's distracting me. She's gigantic. Look how tall she is. Posey and now Petey Williams trying to show off. What on earth? All that did was give Scott Steiner a chance to get to his feet. Petey now up on the shoulders. A big pop up pop. What mystery here as to who this, this woman is. Who's got, oh my, what a power bomb by Steiner. One, two, done. Here is your winner, big pop up pump, Scott Steiner. Both cases now in the possession. A big pop up pump, Scott Steiner, and this, this giant woman now joining Big Papa Pump and raising his hand in victory. I think Scott Steiner brought one of his freaks to Greenville, South Carolina. Well, she was there for an emergency and obviously felt it was over. And Petey Williams about to reel him in. The Canadian Destroyer and in it, and she came just in time. And she's just one of those people that you can't figure out what on earth or who she is. Look at the size of her. My God, Scott Steiner, victorious. Here's the double pose. Now let's send it to JB. Wow. What a night it's been so far already here at Against All Odds. And yet to come tonight, the TNA Knockouts Championship will be on the line as Awesome Kong defends against ODB plus Barbed Wire Massacre 2 yet to come. And the World Heavyweight Championship match, Kurt Angle JB, versus what, what Christian Cage. What the hell Gage. are you doing with this damn announcer thing? Did you just see what happened? Did you see what happened? My wife, Karen, walked out on me, yeah. okay? The most important match of my life, my title match tonight, and my wife walks out on me. What the hell am I gonna do now? You wanna know what to do? Yeah, I wanna know what to do.
It's your lucky day. You came to the right place. As you know, backstage, I'm known as a bit of a ladies' man, and I got a new book coming out. Oh, you have a book coming out? Yeah, I'll give you some two tips about it. It's called JB's Guide to Banging the Broads. It's a new book. It's going to be great. I'll give you some tips. But what's important right now is you learn how to treat Karen properly. Okay, well, what do I do? How do I treat her properly? All right, stand up. I'll show you. Stand up. Come on. All right, now, listen. I got to show you. It's a visual thing. I'm you, you're Karen, okay? Uh, okay. I'm you, you're Karen. I'm Karen. Yeah, you're, you're Karen, you're I'm me. you. I'm okay. you. Give okay. me your hand. Other hand. Other hand. You gotta take Karen by the hand. I'm you. And you look into her eye and you caress that hand. And you look deep into her, into her soul, Kurt. You gotta look into her soul. Maybe pull her close, you know? Yeah. And maybe whisper sweet nothings in her ear, you know? Maybe like, <laughs> something real nice. What'd you just say, you perv? No. Nope. Kurt, I'm being you. You're Karen, not you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I say those things all the time. I, I, I need something bigger, man. The Karen ain't gonna go for that. Bigger? Yeah, something bigger. Come on, think. Huh? What's Thursday? Impact. No, what date is Thursday? Uh, July, no, February, uh, Feb oh, February, February 14th. No, Kurt, what day is Thursday? Valentine's 14th, Day! Valentine's okay, Day! Okay, this okay. Thursday! I'm with you, I'm with you, okay, okay. What an opportune time for you and Karen to renew your vows. Right on TV, in front of pu public, in front of everybody. Oh my God, that's a great idea. Renew our vows. I can't believe I came up with that. That's yeah. great, yeah. Great job, great job. But when you renew your vows, okay, you can then take Karen by the hand. Uh-huh. No, no, put your arm around her. Okay. And look deep into her eyes, caress her head. Mm -hmm. Hi. Say, this is my... I love you. What? I... Hey, 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 AJ. Hey, no, 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 wait, yeah. no, wait. AJ, yeah. AJ, it's not what I'm it saying. seems. Cool. Oh, AJ, no, 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 no. I'm just being Kurt. I'm Karen. He was, he was Kurt. AJ, it's not what it seems. AJ! Some consider it the most prestigious title of its kind. It's the Holy Grail, man. Sought by many, but possessed by only one. It's all about the gold. The TNA World Drinking Title. You're a drinking man. If you're a drinking competitor, this is the belt you want to have around your waist, and I got it. The drinking championship's so important because, I mean, what, what higher title can a man have? It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Uh, this is uh, something important that goes on. What does it take to be the drinking champion? It takes guts, determination, sacrifice, and an iron bladder. Let me tell you that I've been training. Uh, it, it starts early. Training is the key to the championship run. It allows me to be conditioned to be ready for anything. Anything that Storm can throw at me, or any of my competitors can throw at me. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, I'll, I'll run with my dog, and uh, I'll have uh, one of the hat with the two cans with the straws, and I'll be drinking rather than breathing. Well, I'll, I'll start out with a quick warm up. You see that shot? High score. High score again. Then I'll go right to beers. I start sipping the beers. You get me one of everything. Then I sit down, I'll line up four or five beers, drink them as fast as I can, time myself. Bam, 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 all the way down the line. Ribs, uh, donut holes, or donuts. There's times where I'll stare at the wall for 15 or 16 hours, and I, I think it's drinking meditation. I'm a champion. I think he's very deserving of the title. I mean, he's put his heart and soul into the drinking championship. My mom and dad couldn't be more proud. I think that he worked hard for it. Eric Young, he's the best. He's the people's champion. James Storm, bring your A game, because this is how I'm living, man. You better be ready for against all odds. One drink at a time. One drink at a time, James. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest scheduled for one ball as for the drinking championship belt. Introducing first the challenger, accompanied to the ring by the pride of Tennessee, Jacqueline, from Leapersport, Tennessee, Cowboy Jake Storm. You know, this isn't an official TNA championship, but yes, the drinking belt is on the line. I guess that means that tonight here at Against All Odds, we have five championship matches. You'll recall last month at final resolution, the DCS the Drinking Championship Series. Yes, the Tennessee Cowboy James Storm victorious as a result 
He was allowed to name his match for against all odds, and he wants just one thing. He wants to regain possession of the championship belt that he brought to TNA, the drinking championship title. And his opponent, residing in an undisclosed location, and the current holder of the drinking championship belt, Showtime, Pete Young! Gonna try and outsmart the pyro here, DW. He thinks he's got it figured out here at the Milo Center. Oh, well, obviously, they're, uh, he has done it. You know, Mike, you talked about this championship, about it. It's not official, yeah. but let's be honest. Oh, oh what a shot. Man, <laughs> that pyro guy just toying with it. Just toying with Aaron Young. He just sits there and waits. But I'll tell you something. It may not be an official title, but it's no less important to these two. It's a matter of time. And if you see these two, how they how they go about their drinking, they're going to be no hold. Oh, he's getting a head start. Well, he needs a little bit of courage. Well, you know, with Eric, you saw him at 705 outside the bar, ready to get in. He's ready to roll. Hands in. Oh, my. Eric Young bonding with the crowd here in Greenville, South Carolina. And James Storm, the cowboy, not going to have any of that. Came out from behind, drove him to the guardrail, cracks him in that right hand, and then choking him. Well, he had enough. He just realized that Eric Young was just flaunting it, flaunting it, going around, having the cold bruise. And James Storm decided to send the message early on, and he did. He flew out of the ring, and then he just nailed him into the guardrail in front of the fans, and he's got total control. What a shot by Storm. And we are officially underway as you hear the bell. Eric in trouble here. Quick reversal, however, shoots Storm off. And from the Fez press, there goes those right hands, but Storm quickly turns it around on him. Now, one thing about Eric Young, you cannot underestimate him. He just, he's just got something about him, that wrestling ability. And how about that close line there? He just sent James Storm outside the ring, and now he goes up top. He wants to just set this thing up in a hurry. Wow, what a crossbody block on James Storm. Springing off that top turnbuckle all the way out to the arena floor and then in pursuit of Jacqueline who quickly makes her way around the six-sided ring. I think we're gonna get another look at this cross body block. Check it oh, out. Oh, what a shot as you see how high up in the air Showtime Eric Young did and what a shot on James Storm. He up to the concrete. He said he was chasing after Miss Jackie. I think he was chasing after the beer she had in hand. Oh, what a storm just in the rail directly. Ribs first into the safety rail. Eric realizes that the referee's putting in the count, and from outside you see Jacqueline hook his leg and not allow him to follow up the advantage that he has. Well, he goes right after her, and he forgot about James Storm, and that's one thing you can't do with James Storm. To his feet, and just spit right in his face. Oh, and then with the referee, Andrew Thomas distracted by Jacqueline, he reels off a right hand, comes into the corner, but Eric's ready for him. Back body drop him out to the apron, but Storm just about took his head off with that hit. Oh, he did. He just, all the extension he could get. And I mean, it was so vicious that Eric Young just went all the way across the ring and through the ropes and outside. And James Storm needed that momentum. Now look at this. He's removing the padding. He's removing the padding. Yeah, exposing the concrete. Oh, and Eric Young doesn't even still really from that kick doesn't realize what James Storm has done. Look out. Oh! Oh! Man just tossed him right on his hip, right on the concrete. Wow! Damn, we heard that one here at the broadcast table. Oh, and what a fun! Right yeah. the Look how quickly he goes for the pin. Two. Oh, man, it was. Somebody needs to get there and get that mat put back in. Oh, someone gets seriously hurt. Oh, man, he just looks like a fun. And again, he sends him right out. This time, Eric Young able to get the foot down and stop the blow that goes too wicked. Yeah, Storm can really sense it that he's taking control of this match. And again, with Eric out here, just pressing down on the concrete, trying to rearrange first, yeah, his facial features. Oh, EY in trouble. Showtime about to be taken up into the air by the Cowboy. And he's blocked that suplex attempt, and a good thing. Oh, oh man! Talk about exposed concrete and a bad landing. Wow, Storm trying to put Young on the concrete again, and Eric Young able to suplex him back onto the, the concrete himself, and what a shot to the back of James Storm, and he's hurting. 
For the first time in TNA history, Don West, we have a pay-per-view tonight emanating from two different cities, both Greenville, South Carolina, and Orlando, Florida. We're going to tell you about all the details behind that as we see the DDT by Storm on EY. Just face planted. Here's his chance. One, two, boom! Eric Young gets his shoulder up just in time. Because the South Carolina State Athletic Commission would not sign off on barbed wire massacre, they deemed it too violent. We will see Abyss versus Judas Macias from the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida. TNA management Jim Cornette, Crystal, their station in Orlando, will check in with them prior to barbed wire massacre, and Storm's got Eric in trouble. Well, you all here can see right there the eye of the storm as he just takes him around. And not only does he get that high extension to where it's a, a thud when Eric Young's back hits the mat, he also gets him dizzy as he spins him round and round. And although being dizzy is something that Eric Young's probably pretty familiar with. Well, you're right. That, that, well, that's correct, that's for sure. But it is a doubly effective move by Storm who offers a salute to somebody here at ringside. Just tell them that they're his number one fan. Eric in the corner, Ooh. receiving into that right hand, and first one went to the jaw, then a couple of the top of the head, and now he's pie-facing him. Open hand slaps using both the left and right hands. How about against all odds, Don? First time ever in TNA history, two separate cities, Greenville, South Carolina, and Orlando, Florida, as here comes, oh man, what a powerbomb. I mean, he just threw him across the ring. Eric Young showing that strength that you don't realize he has until you see him out there. He really is. I think he's even stronger than he realizes sometimes. But you're right, Mike. It is going to be in two different cities, but you at home, it's not going to matter because you're still going to get to see barbed wire massacre and all his fighters. Just proves how brutal and violent that matchup is that the commission here in South Carolina wouldn't sign off on it. Shot into the corner. Eric able to come through after the shoulder block. Inside out. Oh, here he comes. Plants it off the belly to belly. He's got One, the leg hook. Two. So close. Eric Young right now has momentum. He feels it. We talked about the pride that's involved. I mean, these guys really consider themselves heavyweight drinkers and what a jawbreaker by James Storm and he's able to turn things around that quickly. Drinking championship belt on the line. And Storm can sense that he's on the verge of retaining that title that he brought to TNA from the top. A prone Eric Young is able to move out of the way as Storm goes back first down to the canvas. He took too long and then he was committed. But look at this, Eric Young backwards moves on and he nails it perfectly. This is it, two, go, go! Oh man, I thought it was over because he hit the moves on so clean and crisp, but Storm able to reach down and get the zone up just to die. Well, I think EY was convinced that he had the three count as well. Realize, uh oh, Jacqueline in, quickly up on the shoulders of Eric Young, who uses Jacqueline as a battering ram. What? He Check got this both out. of them. He has both of them on the shoulders. Two for the price of one. Wow, what a shot. Double Death Valley driver covering EY. One, count two. two. James Storm get the shoulder up that time. Nobody can believe it, especially not Eric Young. He thought he had the drinking championship belt back in his possession. Thought he had Storm put away, but that's not the case. Going to have to inflict some more pain and punishment. Going to position the Cowboy up on top and try and follow this advantage here. Eric right up there to meet him, but you see that Storm takes that shortcut. Well, he felt he had to just, oh! Boy, you can feel there. Oh, and he's got his legs on the ropes! But he wasn't able to get him on there in time. He wasn't able to get enough leverage. And Storm realizes it. He almost just threw Eric Young out a little too far. And he was too far. Wait a minute. Jacqueline's got a beer, beer bottle. bottle. Yeah, she's got the beer bottle in her hand. Had it behind her back. Tosses it into Storm. Oh, she just distracted the referee. And now, wait a minute. What the yes! hell? Look at this rhino. And he's setting up. Gore. 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 We haven't seen rhino in months. Where the hell did he come from? Out of nowhere, before Storm could use the beer bottle, the war machine showed up out of nowhere and just absolutely creeped Storm. There's no way he's getting up. Here is your
follows up with the pin, gets the cover, and yes, he retains his drinking championship belt. And Rhino's picked up the stick. Rhino's got the microphone in his hand. Oh, I got to hear what he's got to say. I mean, out of nowhere, he comes in, and he just cut James Storm in half. Oh, what an intense look on the face of the war machine. What a reception here in the Bilo Center for Rhino. You know, I've got a lot to say, but... And we want to hear it. But tonight is not the time or place. So Thursday on Impact, that might be the time and place. But there's one thing for sure, Rhino's back to kick some ass. Oh, I think the War Machine proved that to one and all here in Greenville, South Carolina and against all odds. On that note, we are gonna send it down to Orlando, Florida, where our broadcast colleague Crystal is standing by with Jim Cornette from TNA Management Go. And ladies and gentlemen, an unusual set of circumstances have led us to this point. I'm here with Jim Cornette representing TNA's management, and we're hoping that maybe he can shed a little light on the events that have led up to this bloody Barbar massacre. Well, when, uh, when Abyss demanded this contest, when he first came to me with this type of match, I've got to be honest, I viewed it with a lot of trepidation. I've been involved in professional wrestling for 25 years now, and I've never heard of a match this, this violent or this brutal in nature and concept. But Abyss demanded it. And James Mitchell, on behalf of Judas Messias, accepted it. Therefore, I booked the match, Barbed Wire Massacre 2, the showdown. There must be a winner. However, after the match was advertised by TNA Wrestling, the South Carolina State Athletic Commission stepped in, and very simply, a government entity such as it is, they, uh, they determined that they could not have the Barbed Wire Massacre because of the very real nature that someone may be seriously injured, perhaps even maimed. They would not allow it to take place anywhere in the state of South Carolina. That's why we're here tonight. But I guarantee you that TNA Wrestling, when we advertise something, we're going to deliver. And the barbed wire massacre will go on as scheduled between Abyss and Judas Messias. We wish we could be in South Carolina, but we will be bringing you this match live on pay-per-view. Now, I'll tell you this. I want everybody to acknowledge the fact that this is a serious situation. If you have a faint heart, if you have a weak stomach, if you have any small children in the room, you might want to remove them for the duration of this contest. Because you can see behind me, this is brand new four-pronged barbed wire. This will rip a thousand-pound bull to shreds. And when a wrestler's flesh meets this barbed wire, well, you can see, folks, it's going to change somebody's life forever. Folks, tonight, either Abyss is going to be a very happy man, or Judas Messias and James Mitchell are going to be very happy men. But one thing's for sure. It'll change the complexion of their careers, maybe even their lives, forever. Awesome, Kong. I'm talking to you. You've beaten every broad here in TNA. You haven't beaten the O.D.B. Oh! Well, that's the match we've been talking about. That's the one I want to see. Silent Kong comes in peace. Kong. Not wish to hurt anyone. Oh, this is the awesome Bob from Awesome Kong. Two, we got a new champion. The new era in TNA. It begins tonight. The era of Awesome Kong. Kong is a woman of peace, except when you agitate the monster. Ah, I love to fight. This is the physical confrontation. The matchup that we've been dying to see. She was gonna go for the awesome bomb! Oh. He kicked her through the ropes! And listen, this crowd go crazy! Kong will cripple you. You ain't gonna be whooping me! Kong will break every bone in your body. You think you're bad? I'm badder. Kong will become complete monster. You think you're tough? I am tougher! ODB, you have agitated the monster. You think you're ugly? Well, I'm not just another pretty face. Ha <laughs> ha, see you Sunday. Bam! Oh, yeah! The TNA Women's Knockout Championship is on the line as ODB challenges Awesome Kong. And the Red Hot Knockout Division is ready to take center stage tonight. And against all odds, and it's time for yet another championship match 
here from Greenville, South Carolina. And let's check out the bullet points. Yes, since arriving in TNA late last year, Awesome Kong has left a trail of bodies in her path as we take a look there at the two competitors on your screen. And now we're gonna get the bullet points, I believe. We're gonna talk about, since her arrival, how Awesome Kong has left that trail of bodies in her path. Yes, on her way to gaining possession of the TNA Knockouts Championship. Let's talk about the monster being agitated. Despite putting several knockouts, including Gail Kim on the disabled list with concussions, the advisor Raisha Saeed claims that she comes in peace. Tonight, the challenger ODB presents a different style of opponent for Kong. Can she match her in terms of physicality? That's a question we're about ready to answer. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Salas continues with the one fall contest for the TNA Women's Knockout Championship. Introducing first the challenger from Minneapolis, Minnesota, who Oh, what a night for ODB as the crowd here. Let you know how they feel about her. You know, we talk about ODB, about how physically she's as imposing as anybody that's ever been in the ring with Awesome Kong. She's not afraid of a fight. She's gonna have to be all of that. She's gonna have to reach down and, and do things she's never done the ring before because Awesome Kong is unlike anybody. Aisha Saeed, residing in Japan, standing six feet one inches tall, weighing 272 and three eighths pounds, the TNA Women's Knockout Champion, Hussein Kong. Without question, the most dominant force in the knockout division brings the championship belt to the ring for the title defense. You heard from our ring announcer, David Penzer, six foot one inches tall. 272 and 3 8 pounds of an agitated monster. Those were the words of her advisor, Raisha Saeed. Concerned look as well on the face of ODB, but I don't think that she's gonna back down from Kong. Well, I mean, as if Awesome Kong ever needed any other kind of an advantage, but you know what? Raisha Saeed is a wild card. You know nothing about her. They creep out, you got admitted, it creeps out when she comes down with Awesome Kong, and then, then speaking underneath that, and then telling you how she's a, a woman of peace, but if you agitate her, she will maim you, she will harm you, and it's got to get into your mind. But if there's anybody that's not going to be intimidated, it's ODB. Speaking of getting into somebody's mind, I think ODB did that recently on Impact On. You remember when she popped up on the big screen? got inside the head of Awesome Paul during her match with Tracy Brooks, took her out of her game. But boy, she was still able to refocus and get it back together, but now this is the showdown that we've been anticipating. And Kong grabs her by the hair, but ODB matches her. Well, we were wondering how they were gonna start off, but it's obvious, ODB's gonna try to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe and she tries to pick up 272 and 3 8 and decides against it. But look at these shots. Boy, that would have been something. Could you imagine trying oh. to pick her up in a slam? And then see, she just gets outright sandwiched by Kong. She tried to mount an offense. She tried to use the ring ropes to spring off and get some extra momentum behind the move. And now, when you talked about liquid courage earlier, got the flash busted out here. And Raisha Saeed getting right in ODB's face. Screaming at her right now. I mean, I don't know what. Speaking of bitch. Trying to hear what ODB said. That was pretty plain. Pretty loud and clear. Look at that. ODB, well, she wasn't able to get a shot of liquid courage, but she took a nice shot to the face and again tries to pick her up. But look at Awesome Kong. It just can't be smooth. That's 272 and 3 8 pounds. Instead, able to float over. Instead of getting slammed by Kong, unleashes first a boot, then a shot to the chest. Gonna try and shoot her off into the ropes, but boy, there's the reversal and into the corner turnbuckle goes ODB, and she just got nailed once again. Hits you with that force, and you can see she just takes the air right out of ODB. And now Kong relentless, the boot to the back of the head, grabs her by the hand. She can inflict damage so severely, we've seen it. I mean, she's just so strong that she just flings ODB outside of the ring. Gonna 
try and follow up the edge that she has now. Drops down to the arena floor, grabs ODB by the hair, and where's she gonna send her? Oh, any damn where well she pleases, right into the steel, and you can see that ODB, she really hurt her knee. She's favoring the knee right out here as she hit the concrete. When well, she tried to use her knee to block the blow, she was heading towards it. When the knee he hits steel, it's gonna hurt now. You saw the back that time go into the rail as ODB, everything she's tried is just not working. As this mountain of a woman just takes control and man, you talk about chop. She chops it. You can see her all the way here. Well, the champion building. You're not kidding. Champion taking the challenger all around the arena. And senior referee Rudy Charles giving her just a little bit extra leeway in terms of the count, I believe, before finally he convinces Awesome Kong to get the match back in the ring. Tosses ODB back in it. Awesome Kong stalks her from behind. Well, you can hear ODB screaming there, just trying to get herself jacked up again. But a boot to the back, and it can end that quickly. Look at how methodical Kong is. Oh, what? He just wound up and crushed her with that blow right in the back. She really is. She takes the time, and she inflicts the damage at will. She knows there's nothing the opponent can do to stop her. Kong grabs ODB. Brings her in, could be time for an awesome bomb. Got her up, and ODB fighting it off. Gonna try and fight off that power bomb attempt, and, and at least momentarily does. Oh, got her hair wrapped around, that's the way you're doing it. Oh, she's trying to give her the dirty dozen, but oh, she was able to duck that spinning back fist by Awesome Kong, and look at this. She's got it wrapped around the head. Oh, but look at the straight the punch she just fucked Went for the Tornado DDT, not able to do so. This time goes for the Fez Press, and just gets dragged all right back down to the canvas. The strength and power, it's not like anything that I've ever seen in the knockouts. Hell, it's like nothing I've ever seen in women's wrestling in the many years that I've been watching it. Drop kick attempt, and you'll notice that Kong stays on her feet. Well, that's she what, comes again. That's what she's gotta do, is gotta take something out of the Gail Kim playbook. Beat her in ways that, that Kong can't stop you. Use the drop kick. Come at it from different angles. You're not gonna match her strength on strength. It's just not possible. You can see her going up top, and that's how you topple her down. Got Get that top down. Count two. No. Oh, she just swung away. He got to the two count, and then also Kong just used that strength. And now look at that look at Kong's face. I think she realizes how close that was. It's very rare we ever hear a count on Austin Kong. And now ODB, for the third time, tries to pick her up, but just doesn't have the strength. Oh, wow. there's a clothesline. Just about took her head off with that clothesline. And a dazed and confused ODB. Pick back up, here comes the double underhook. You know what this oh, is. Oh, you got it. Bam, the implant buster. And she just creeps her. One, two, wow. I thought it was over. ODB able to, look at that, you can see Awesome Kong can't believe it. Oh, I did as well. I thought that was it. I thought ODB was toast after the implant buster. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Kong gonna go for that splash, I believe. Wait a minute, here she comes. ODB cuts her off. Just shot after shot as she's playing. Look at this, look at this. She's getting underneath. Awesome Paul, can't you pick her up? That's near 300 pounds, you're gonna try and slam, girl. She's trying to use all of her strength, and she does, it breaks her down on her back. That's absolutely amazing. One, Ten, two, two, go! Awesome Paul got the shoulder up. Just wasn't enough force, but you can see how charged up she is. She realizes she can do it. Oh, we never thought we would see that slam of awesome Kong. ODB did it, and here she goes with the flask. Oh, she's getting that liquid courage now. She needs anything she can get a hold of, and if it works mentally, then it's what she got to do. And she goes charging, and look at her with the blow in the chest. Gonna go back to the well again. And another shot, but again, you see that Kong does not go down. Hooks that top rope. Keep your eyes on Raisha Saeed. Wow. ODB just took a shot on Raisha Saeed. That'll teach her to get to the ring apron, but look at she turns around. Look at the spinning back step. What a shot. Lost her focus just momentarily. Kong connects with those moves. Here comes the awesome bomb. Oh, wham. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner and still TNA Women's Knockout Champion, Awesome Kong! She did it! You 
have to credit, I believe, that momentary distraction by Raisha Saeed. ODB lost her focus, but wow, Don West, what a performance by ODB, even in the loss. Well, she was able to finally get Awesome Kong up high and bring her down on her back, and so close. But ODB, here, there's still just no way that you can come out ahead of her when she gets that game on, and she's so destructive. And when she has the advantage, and when she gets you up in the air with the Awesome Bomb, it's over. Let's see if we can show you some of the highlights of this match. Yeah, let's review everything that went down in this TNA Knockout Championship match. Early on, ODB sandwiched in the corner. This is where Kong took the challenger outside, put her into the guardrail. Now, ODB turned it around, but just momentarily, that was the implant buster. Well, but there, right there, it looked like ODB. The door opened, she had her chance, and that's the awesome bomb. And the awesome bomb is spelled two. The awesome bomb, yes for her, awesome Kong. Victorious and against all odds. Great outing, great performance by ODB, even in defeat, but Kong remains the champion. Now let's send it to the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida for pre-match comments from Father James Mitchell concerning Barbed Wire Massacre. Chris, my son, this should be a rather familiar situation, just like when you were a little boy. Mommy's not at home. It's just you and Daddy. And tonight, we're going to talk about retribution. We're going to talk about betrayal in the most violent and harsh way possible. Because tonight, I'm going to send your stepbrother and my son, Judas Macias, into the barbed wire massacre with you. And when that barbed wire cuts into your skin, mommy won't be there to save you. When that barbed wire digs so deep into your body that you can hear it tear and cut into the bone, mommy won't be there to save you. When that barbed wire rips the flesh off of your body to the point that you look up at me with those big, stupid, brown, tear-filled eyes saying, please, Daddy, make it stop. Don't hurt me anymore. That's when I'm going to show you the truest parental love possible. That's when I'm going to tell Judas Macias to send you straight to hell and end your miserable, wretched existence once and for all. The entire world now knows that I am your father! 1,000 feet of twisted metal. The scars that I inflict pain. It is not shame that you're dealing with, Chris. It's guilt. Razor sharp edges. Destruction. Flesh tearing at barbed wire massacre. That is the reason you roll around in thumbtacks and barbed wire and broken glass, isn't it? Blood, torture, career ending. And against all odds, in barbed wire massacre 2, your own stepbrother is going to take barbed wire and use it to rip and cut and slash and tear your flesh off of your bones. Every man's nightmare, a masochist's dream. Let the bloodbath begin. I am going to sit back and revel in your pain, torment, and humiliation when your stepbrother, Judas Macias, puts an end to your existence once and for all. Warning, prepare for the horror as the Monster Abyss faces Judas Macias in Barbed Wire Massacre 2. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida, where for only the second time in TNA's five-year history, the most violent match in professional wrestling comes to pay-per-view. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Barbed Wire Massacre 2, the most violent, the most brutal, indeed the goriest match in all of professional wrestling. The competitors have agreed
agreed to it. As a matter of fact, they demanded it. TNA Wrestling will not be responsible for any injury, no matter how severe, to either competitor. The wrestlers have been warned. Let the carnage begin. Ladies and gentlemen, for years, we have witnessed the relationship between Father James Mitchell and the Monster Abyss. We knew that there was a secret that connected the two individuals, but we were all shocked when it was revealed that Mitchell is the biological father of Abyss. Yes, that makes Abyss and Judas Messiah stepbrothers. The dysfunctional family finally settles their differences tonight. But this is a match that promises violence, it promises brutality, and it promises bloodshed on a level that you've never seen. It's time for Barbed Wire Massacre. And you see the blood just dripping down the mouth of Judas Macias. You realize there's really no way to prepare for a match of this brutality because there are no winners. There's really just one survivor because the barbed wire can rip through flesh as easily as you saw Jim Cornette take that, that apple and rub it across the barbed wire. And here comes the opponent for Judas Macias. It is the Monster Abyss, and you heard it from Jim Cornette earlier. And this past Thursday on Impact, we warned you, if you are the least bit squeamish, if you are fade apart, then quite honestly, Barbed Wire Massacre, this match is not for you. This is a warning to women and children. Be aware, because you are about to witness a match that has no equal when it comes to violence. You've never seen anything like Barbed Wire Massacre. One thing about it, we know the Monster Abyss has the experience edge. He's been in a match of this nature. He's been in a match of this, this violence, and he knows the damage it can do. One thing you have to do in a match like this is you have to be able to block out pain because you're going to be in it. You're going to be in so much pain like you've never been before. You notice that the ring ropes have been replaced by barbed wire. Abyss rolls in to face Judas Macias, and Don, you mentioned it earlier, Abyss has been there before, and he has that advantage. It was in December of 2005 at our Turning Point pay-per-view when Abyss won the only other barbed wire massacre match in history when he defeated Sabu. Right now, you can see Judas Macias with those dead eyes, those soulless eyes. There's just no conscience there. No, none at all. He's sizing up the monster Abyss, stalking him in a way. Now Abyss has his chance, his chance for the revenge of all the torture that his father, James Mitchell, has given him, and he can take it out on Judas Macias right now, as you can see him going right after each other. You know, I'm not sure that Abyss, being in the previous barbed wire massacre match, gives him any kind of a physical edge over Judas Macias, but it has to give him a mental advantage. He knows the level of pain, the threshold of pain that he is going to have to absorb in this match. He realizes exactly what it takes to survive. This is the kind of matchup, though, one mistake, and that can be the end. One mistake, and if the other one's able to take advantage of it, he can end it in a hurry. Because when that ball wire starts ripping through your flesh, and the blood starts flowing, and just dripping down your body, well, it changes a man, and it makes him just squeamish, and it makes him want to quit. But you can see, you can see this, you see it's trying to push the monster Abyss into the barbed wire, and Abyss literally puts his hand out to block it. You know, earlier this week, I had the chance to talk to the monster Abyss about this match as he catches Macias. Gonna try and go to a power move here, but instead, Macias fights him off, and then connects with a drop kick from the back, and you see that Abyss just went right into the barbed wire. Oh, that is so unforgiving as it just tears right at the raw flesh. And it doesn't matter. You can, it can hit you in so many different parts, and that's the way you do it, is Macias that drop kicks in the back, and you see him. Blow after blow, shot after shot, anything you can do to weaken the opponent where you can take advantage of it. And not just barbed wire. Oh, oh the ropes is off! Just 
Macias lands right on top of it. Yes, chest first, directly into the unforgiving barbed wire. Advantage to the monster abyss as Macias checks to see, as, as well as Father James Mitchell, the damage that has been done. Want to talk about my conversation with Abyss. He realizes that win, lose, or draw in this match, it's potentially a career-ending bout. Career-threatening, to say the least. And he said it's not a matter of if you get injured, it's just a matter of how badly you get injured. And you see the drop toehold by Judas Macias, and Abyss crashes right into the barbed wire. And that's what the barbed wire could do. And you could see his hand, the tape, got caught in the barbed wire, and he wasn't able to get free. And that allows Judas Macias to get right to him and put the boots to the head. One shot after another. And now with the fist, one shot after another. And like I was saying earlier, it's not just the barbed wire around the ring. Keep in mind, there are barbed wire weapons that can be brought into play. Plus the barbed wire boards as well, as we see Judas Macias, the stepbrother of the Monster Abyss. Yes, the son of Father James Mitchell, absolutely relentless in his attack. Macias is going to charge across, but Abyss is able to extend the leg. Get the big boot up and drop Macias right in his tracks. Oh, just turned him inside out with it, and now the Monster Abyss slides out of the ring, and you can see him pulling up the mat, looking underneath the ring, grabbing for something, and look at that! He's got the steel chair wrapped with barbed wire. You talked about how the weapons would come into play wrapped with barbed wire, and that's exactly the case. The steel chair, and you can see, Don, that there's so much barbed wire wrapped around that piece of furniture as Abyss rolls back in. This is his chance to put a weakened Macias away. Well, if, if just worrying about the barbed wire around the ring isn't enough, think about the damage that can be done with barbed wire wrapped around a chair like that. If you see it in the hand of a fist, and look at this, he places it on the chest of Judas Macias. Oh, he's got something in mind here, some kind of a game plan, some kind of strategy. A concerned father, James Mitchell, looks oh! on, but how about that? Oh! Oh, Judas Macias was actually the one who was prepared with a game plan as he was able to get the barbed wire chair. Oh! And Abyss just crotched himself. Look at that. Oh, I don't have to tell you how bad that's going to hurt. As he's able to turn that barbed wire on its side. And the monster Abyss took just a little too long. Trying to, to land on top of Judas Macias instead. Oh, look out, look it. out, look oh! out. Just got hit with the barbed wire chair right in the head. The second that Abyss got to his feet. Yes, Judas Macias ready with that shot. And he nailed him twice directly in the head with that steel chair wrapped in barbed wire. Oh, and you saw the barbed wire just get tangled into the hair right uh, there of the monster of this. What a wicked shot. And Judas Macias, and you see the blood, the blood pouring down the forehead of Abyss. And we told you folks, if you're squeamish, you might want to leave because this is just getting started. You see Judas Macias pounding on the bloody face of the monster Abyss. It's exactly what we anticipated. We told you that there would be brutality, violence, and bloodshed unlike anything that you've seen. And the pattern continues here with Judas just biting the already bloody head of the monster abyss. We also talked earlier about those boards that are wrapped in barbed wire, and now it looks like Macias is about ready to bring one into play. Well, he feels he's got the monster abyss beaten down enough that he has time to throw that barbed wire board in as James Mitchell helped him to speed up the process. And now abyss already in pain, blood running in his eyes. He realizes what Judas Macias has done. As Judas Macias playing that barbed wire board, Abyss does the smart thing and crawls out of the ring. We talked earlier about how this is a match that's equally about survival. And I think that was good strategy on the part of the monster Abyss to roll out and at least momentarily avoid being put into that barbed wire board. But look at how Macias is all over him. Well, Macias just followed him right out. He's not going to give Abyss a chance to catch his breath. And look at him, just drinking the blood of Abyss, just fighting on Abyss, where it's bleeding down the head to open the cut up even more, to make the blood flow even, even faster. No soul, no conscience from Judas Macias, and it's almost as if he's just he's feeding off that blood that he sees flow down from the head of Abyss, who quickly turns it around and flings it directly into the steel step. Well, this might be the, the moment that the monster Abyss was looking for, that advantage is when you saw Macias hit the steel step, you saw him hit the point of those steps, and you know the pain, and now reaching underneath 
And obviously, you've got to be careful what you're grabbing, but he's grabbing another of the barbed wire boards. And you can see the blood already on Judas Macias as the monster of this setting that barbed wire board up from the rail to the ring. You know, this has been a years long ordeal between Father James Mitchell and Abyss, and when I talked to him this week, I had the sense that the physical, the mental abuse has really come to a peak, and it's really starting to wear on the monster Abyss as he takes Macias, gonna try and send him into that barbed wire board. Watch Mitchell from behind. Well, Mitchell knew the damage that Abyss could do as he just sacrificed himself and smashed his son in the back, and look at this! Abyss has got him throttled! And you can see the crowd wanting to throw him in, but Judas Macias just in time to hit him in the head to stop it. How many times have we talked about the tunnel vision from the monster Abyss? He gets his sight set on his father, James Mitchell, and that enables Judas Macias to come right back in, turn this match in his favor. Series of shots to the already opened up wound on the head of the monster Abyss, and then Macias rolls him into the six-sided ring that's surrounded by the barbed wire. Well, in a match like this, the momentum can change uh -oh. that fast, and we know what Judas Macias can do with this Bob Ryan, the rock that he has as he comes over to Abyss and is going to try oh to God. Oh, he just wrapped it around the arm and just cut it right down. Mitchell handed in the piece of barbed wire to his son. And Macias, you're right, Don, just raked the arm of the monster Abyss and then, of course, puts it in his mouth. We've seen that before as well. It's just a sick visual seeing him take those barbed wire spikes and rub it on the inside of his lip. And oh. now he uses it right on the forehead, the busted open forehead, as he uses that barbed wire and just slams it into his head. He's already cut one of the arms. Now he grabs the other oh, arm not and again. he breaks it right down the arm. Just slicing open the raw flesh of the monster abyss after repeatedly hitting him in the top of the head in that already cut forehead of the monster abyss and Macias can sense it at this point. Oh, he feels like he's totally in control and then just reels off those shots, those right hands, one after the other to the top of the head and Abyss is in trouble. Well, look at the blood, the blood's starting to flow, not just from the head, but from both of those massive arms of the monster abyss. And it just, you can see mentally right now that Judas Macias is in total control as Abyss taking one shot after another. What a wicked shot to the head as he's got him in the corner. Macias measured him, charged across the ring, directed the boot into the head of the monster Abyss and dropped him. And you can see that the lifeless form of Abyss, it's difficult for him even to get back up to his feet. As soon as he does, Macias connects first with the right hand. Now he's gonna come charging at him again. Opportunity here for Abyss to turn it around. Caught him with the boot. Now he's gonna take him with the choke slam. Can he choke slam him right into the barbed wire? Well, you can see how Macias is fighting it off. Elbow into the head. Anything you can do, but look at this. He's got it. Oh, all. oh, man, he just swung him as his belly goes right on. That exposed flesh right on the barbed wire table. Stomach first right into the barbed wire and you see the reaction of the fans at the impact zone in Orlando, Florida. Here's the replay. What a shot as he takes him up and there was nothing for Macias to do as he lands right on it. You can see a great angle of it right there. Not just the belly, all the way into the thigh, all the way half down the leg. Oh, look at Abyss. Just the blood flowing from his head from both arms. Macias tries to recover. Abyss goes and yes, he's got another barbed wire board. Now we're gonna see if Judas Macias is gonna be able to dig down deep on and try and mount some kind of a comeback because Abyss has really taken it out of him here in the last couple of minutes. But look at this, the loss of blood. That's also starting to play a role in this match. Oh, it's, it's just taking him emotionally and taking him physically. As Judas Macias able to get to his feet. And now look at it, trying to climb up, using that barbed wire to get to the ring apron. And he's, it, sometimes it can backfire as he got his arm caught. And now Abyss has him by the throat. Oh, oh man! Just threw him in the barbed wire board again as it breaks down to the ground. Choke slammed him stomach first inside the ring. Then outside the ring back first. And here's that tunnel vision on Father James Mitchell again. I think Abyss feels that he's got Macias momentarily taken out of the match and he can direct his attention to Father James. Well, James Mitchell screaming at Macias to, to get his torn flesh out of the board, but there's no way at this point. 
And you're right, the Monster Abyss has the opportunity. He's got him up. Oh, and he hits the black hole slam. He just powered his own father directly down with the black hole slam. And here comes Macias right back into the battle, and Macias catches him with the right hand. Wow, Macias able to, oh, he's got a black hole slam for Macias. Here we go. Here we go. One, two. Oh, man, Macias got the shoulder up at the last second. Oh, and that look on the, the face of Abyss, at least what we could see that's not covered by the mask, showed almost desperation as we take, yes, a replay look. There he goes, there goes Macias, back first through the barbed wire board from several angles. I mean, what a shot, as you can see, the hair tangle. There's the black hole slam on his father, James Mitchell, and then he has one for Macias, and we thought it was all over, but somehow, Macias able to get the shoulder up at the last split second. Referee Earl Hebner with the count, only got to two. And you can see the low blow right there from Macias. That stops Abyss, who had turned it around and check out the barbed wire. Oh, it's got the hair of the monster Abyss, or I'm not sure, possibly Macias, tangled. It just shows you, though, what those barbed wires can do, the, the damage that it can cause. You leave a little something of yourself on the barbed wire every time you hit it. Nice kick to the gut. Oh, Earl Hebner got in front of the monster abyss and he was able to stop it. Oh, wow! He just bull rushed Abyss right into the, the barbed wire board. And look at Abyss, as you can see him shaking convulsively, shaking violently. I understand, Don, that we are going to take another look at that impactful move by Judas Macias as he charges across. You said bull rushed, and that's exactly what he did, man. A oh, bad landing for Abyss, back first right into the barbed wire. Think about what he said to me earlier this week. Abyss said it's not a matter of if you get injured, it's just how badly you get injured, and that's exactly what we're seeing play out here at Barbed Wire Massacre. I mean, Mike, it's survival. It's all it is. It's the last man standing as every one of these guys has taken one wicked, brutal, bloody shot after another, and that says it all right there. They, they don't have the strength to get to their feet. They're on their knees and just raining blows on each other. Anything they can do is now to see it finally gets to his. Abyss tries to get back up to the vertical base and finally does. Macias in the midst of a series of shots, right hand after right hand, and Abyss holding on here. Doesn't want to go into that barbed wire board. There oh! it is! Black hole slam into the barbed wire! Here he goes! One, two, he's got it! Was that incredible? Wow! The Monster Abyss does it. The crowd in Orlando, Florida, the impact zone goes crazy. Yes, the dysfunctional family finally settles their differences, and the Monster Abyss defeats Judas Macias in Barbed Wire Massacre. What a vicious black hole slam as he was able to take it and put Judas Macias right on the board. And let's show you some of the brutal violent action. There you see the steel chair wrapped in barbed wire. The vicious shots, but that was when the monster abyss just pressed him in the air and put him down, and there's the back. Black hole slam for Father James Mitchell. Macias drove it, bull rushed him right into the barbed wire board, but then the black hole slam by abyss enables him to get the one, two, three. You know, many wrestlers earn their legacy in this business through rivalries and championships. Others through enduring and dishing out pain and punishment. And I think when you fill out the list that includes Funk, The Sheik, Abdullah, Cactus Jack, and Brody, add the name Abyss. Robert Roode, in just a couple of minutes, you step through that curtain into the ring with Booker T. And at this point, sir, let me ask you this. Do you regret any of your actions, not only against Booker T, but against his beautiful wife, Charmel? You know, Scott, it's unfortunate that it's come down to this. I never asked for this. Robert Roode never wanted this to happen. But you did, Booker T. You see, you're the one responsible for what happened to your wife last month at Final Resolution. You're the reason why Charmel's jaw was broken, not me. Remember when you said, what baby wants, baby gets? <laughs> well, it's apparent that baby got a fistful of it last month at Final Resolution. I 
tried to be a man, Booker T. I tried to be a gentleman. I tried to apologize to you both publicly and personally. But you wouldn't accept. And so be it. Because tonight at Against All Odds, Robert Roode, both publicly and personally, takes his apologies back. Let's get one thing perfectly clear. I am sick and tired of you, Booker T. I hate everything about you. I hate the way you look. I hate the way you smell. I hate the way you walk. I hate the way you talk. And most of all, I hate your horse-faced, skanky wife, Charmel. Tonight, there will be no accidents. Tonight, when I shatter your jaw and show you that it pays to be rude, it will be the farthest thing from an accident you will ever see or feel. <laughs> now I know you can dig that, bitch. An unspeakable offense committed. Here, what? 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 What the hell did Bobby just do? Oh my God! This is totally inexcusable. TNA management, they've mandated no male on female violence. This is not gonna be tolerated under any circumstances. No regret. You agreed to put your horse-faced skank of a wife in the ring with Robert Roode, knowing full well that anything could happen. No apology. Shamel can't be bossing you around your house because her jaw's wired shut. You want to thank me, Booker T? No remorse. Remorse? Remorse? Absolutely none. This is professional wrestling and shit happens. A helpless feeling turns a heart to stone. What's the update on Shamel? I mean, how's she doing? It's pretty bad. You know, I blame myself for this. Might have been the biggest mistake of my life. It's more than any husband can take. Revenge is brewing. I never felt this way about a person in my life. I never felt hatred in my heart for a human being uh, until now. Retribution is inevitable. It's gonna be the day I focus all my frustration, all the pain I feel towards one person. And that one person is Robert Rude. Payback is due. I'm gonna beat the living hell out of Robert Rude. Wow, look at this! Here comes Booker T! Booker T seeks to settle the score against the man who brutally hospitalized his wife. It ain't about wrestling. It's about being a man. Now it's personal. Robert Rude faces Booker T in a revenge match. Booker T, you are set to do battle with Robert Root in just a matter of moments, and we do know Charmel is home as we speak right now, watching tonight's pay-per-view. Any final thoughts before your matchup? You heard it, man. Bobby Root said he is sick and tired, so I'm going to administer a little treatment for him. Bobby Root, in about 30 seconds, your poor gas belongs to me. Ladies and gentlemen, the next match at Against All Oz is a one-fall grudge match. Introducing first from Wall Street, in Manhattan, New York, Robert Roode! You know, we probably use the term grudge match too often in professional wrestling. But you want a true definition of what a grudge match is? That's what you're about to see at Against All Oz. Here comes the man who has absolutely zero remorse for what he did when he shattered the jaw of Charmel, the wife of Booker T. Here comes, accompanied by Peyton Banks, Robert Roode. Think about what Robert Roode also did. Taking back the apology, letting Booker T know, hey, it's on. He's gonna take it just as personal. And he said he's not sorry for the damage that he caused. From Houston, Texas, Booker T! And I would anticipate that this probably isn't going to be a wrestling match. I would think that this is going to be an out-out fight. It's time to turn these two loose. 
It's time to allow Booker T to gain that measure of revenge. Well, Mike, there's emotion, and then there's the emotions that Booker T is feeling. This isn't about winning a match. This isn't about, about getting the pin to him. This is about getting payback for what Robert Roode did to his soulmate. But Robert Roode knows that if Booker T gets the early jump, it's going to end in a hurry, and Robert Roode is waiting for him. But you're right. It's just become a fight already from the beginning. I mean, that's what we anticipated. That's what it had to be once these two squared off. I have to admit, I was impressed with Robert Roode to the point where he was prepared for Booker T in the second that Booker came through those ring ropes. He was right on him, but look how quickly that the bookman has turned it around in his favor. What a knee. Well, you got to figure that Robert Roode feels that he's going to have to outlast this one. He knows that Booker T is charged up. And he also, when you're charged up like this, it can wear you down. So if Booker T doesn't finish him early, look for Robert Roode to maybe somehow come out on top. Booker going to take Roode. Wow, powering down with the side slam. And you can see the effect there that that had as Roode favors his back. And boy, around the ringside area, Peyton Banks looks very concerned. And then again, Mike, Booker T may end this in a hurry. If he keeps going at this pace, he is absolutely crushing. Everything has a little bit of extra hope. Everything has just that little bit extra spark. And you can see, watch this, as he just wrecks that hand right across the face. Yeah, including those open hand chops, both to the chest and to the face of Robert Roode. The crowd showing 100% support for Booker, who shoots Roode off into the corner and then follows up the corner clothesline, and he just decked him down goes Roode. I like the way Booker T is handling this situation. He's not getting over emotion. He's actually being very calculated. He had a game plan, and I guess that just shows you the professionalism that he exudes as he sends Robert Roode over the top. He knows that if he makes a mistake, Robert Roode will make him pay, and he's just been absolutely perfect from the start. Peyton Banks was momentarily checking on her man, Robert Roode, but that was until Booker dropped down to the arena floor and decided to turn up that full court press here on Robert Roode. She gets out of Dodge, and he, oh my, takes him up into the air and drops him right across that safety rail. You can see Robert Roode is just getting one shot at him after another as he just got his chest raked across the top of that guardrail. And how about Booker T? Again, calm, cool, collected. I can't believe it. I probably heard anybody else would have came up like a freight train, but he didn't. He came out with a purpose, and it's working because it's taking Robert Roode off his game. Another impactful blow out on the arena floor is the short arm clothesline, and referee Slick Johnson allowing him just a little bit of leeway, and boy, you almost have to do that with the conditions of this match. But then as Booker tries to get Roode back into the ring to break the count, you see that Robert Roode uses that opportunity to turn it around in his favor. Well, it's almost like Booker T got himself into a comfort zone. He got just a little too nonchalant. And Robert Roode was waiting for one little window of opportunity. One little one, and when it opened, he went right after. Now look at Robert Roode as he's taking it out on Booker T. Series of shots with the boots directing the gut, the midsection of Booker T. As Roode looks around, and now you can just sense the confidence oozing. Oh, but Booker puts on the brakes and extends the leg. Just wraps it right around the head of Rude. Oh, look at the look at the look in Booker T's eye, and you can see Robert Rude looking up with a little bit of I want to say fear, but definitely concern as Booker T using those knees and those long legs and sending those knee shots to the head and now the elbow. And now you can just see that extra. Well, what is Peyton Banks doing in the ring? Oh, she's looking for an opportunity to stop this and, and, and give Robert Rude oh. an opportunity. Oh, and you saw right there, boy, almost the deja vu situation. As, as, as Booker turned around, that was almost like what we saw when Robert Roode decked Charmel, shattered her jaw, but at least that time, Booker, oh boy, wise enough to hold up and not deck Peyton Banks, but as a result of that interference, look who's back in the driver's seat. Well, it just shows you how it can happen. I mean, it's just reflex. He just made the move. He was able to put the brakes on it. You wonder what Tate Banks was doing. You can see her pulling on the hair of Booker T and throwing that neck into the, into the ring rope and taking a layer out of him. And Robert Rooney senses this is a, another opportunity for him. Oh, turn him inside out with that knee to the gut. 
And quickly, Rude tries to follow up, goes for the pin. It's barely a two count before Booker's able to power out. Rude goes airborne, drops down with the knees, right across the chest. Come off the ropes again and snap the neck of Booker. Boy, it's just such a vicious move as he gets that momentum forward and, and then pulls on the back of the head and the neck. And you can see Booker T now trying to shake the pain out. They get to his feet, and Robert Rude, well, he, he senses this momentum is turned completely in his favor. Boom! Jacks the jaw that time of Booker with the right hand. A second one, directly to the head, and here comes Rude off the ropes. Wow. Booker's prepared, ready for him, thought he was going to go for the bookend. Whatever it was, it was blocked by Rude, but then connects with a drop kick out of nowhere. Nice standing drop kick as he got great extension. So close to the pinnacle. Johnson down for the count, but I don't think you're going to beat Booker T under these circumstances or many circumstances. Just with that standing drop kick, and Rude says he's going to try and neutralize Booker at this point. Got that powerful arm wrapped around the head and neck of Booker, trying to just take all the life right out of him. Well, you can hear the crowd completely behind Booker T. They know what it means to him. But they're absolutely trying to will him to his feet. That's what and, they're doing. And he's done it in wow. Booker T. Able to just grab that arm and sling Robert Root over. Feeds off the adrenaline of the crowd here in Greenville, South Carolina. But then as he charges in, Root's ready for it. What a kick! What a kick! Super kick right to the jaw! Can he get up and finish him as you see Robert Root grabbing the top of his head? And Peyton Banks tries to wheel him up to his feet. Well, you can see that Root trying to clear the cobwebs after being on the receiving end of that great super kick, Booker to the corner. Rude able to block the first punch. He missed with the second, but another spin kick catches Rude totally unaware. Wow, Booker T is just placing those spin kicks and those kicks perfectly. As that one was headed, wow, as he comes flying off the ropes and uses that forearm when I'm ahead of Rude. Flying forearm shot as he attempts to follow up. Rude catches him. Spine buster down by Booker. Oh boy, Rude in trouble now. You can see the back just bowing up when he hit like that. The back spasm. Robert Rude knows that he's in trouble, and Booker T knows he's in total control. Just look at him. He's feeling the vibe in here in the Milo Center. And here comes the spinner, Rudy. Wow, what a response from the crowd here in Greenville, South Carolina. Peyton Banks realizes her man's in trouble, and that's a pretty smart move by Robert Rude. Grabbed the trunks of Booker T and just shot him right through the ring ropes and out to the arena floor. Well, it was desperation, and now you can see Booker T grabbing the ankle of Robert Rude. And, whoa! The man pulls him right into that steel ring post. Oh, oh, and then he wraps his leg, wraps his knee right around the steel. Booker gonna roll back in. Now let's see if he can put Robert Rude away. Just kick the back of the leg, the, the back of the shin, as you can see Robert Rude limping as he gets the one leg. And Booker T gonna go for more damage, but oh, wait a minute, breaks the eyes as Robert Rude takes the three cut. Yeah, another cheap shot from Rude. And it's so difficult when you lose your vision to try and get any kind of offense rolling. Telegraph of the back body drop, hurts Rude. Series of kicks by Booker, three of them all, and then when he went, that scissor kicked on. You saw that out of nowhere. Robert Rude able to move out of the way. That's where the long legs just came in at disadvantage because he, he landed on the top rope. Oh, but uh, Booker T plays possum and Robert Rude goes right after him, and then Booker T uses that shoulder and sends him over the top rope. Elevated him high over the top rope, down to the arena floor. He's got Rude by those long walks and sends him, yeah, face first right into the steel post, right into that steel rail. Well, this match has been everything that you thought it would be, and Booker T right now again. Every time Robert Rude is able to get momentum his way, Booker T with, you know, he's vision this thing. He started out, wait a minute. Where's he going? I was just going to talk about how this is the opportunity for Booker T to put this away, to win one for his wife, Charmel. And I think Rude may have felt that as well as he rolled out of the ring and well, he's headed up the ramp and headed to the backstage area here at the Bilo Center. And you can see we're going to try and keep our cameras on him. Boy, it's tough we don't have lights properly back there. Well, you can see that Robert Rude, as they're counting him out, Robert Rude is literally trying to leave the building. And they, they pat him both out as they're both discounted, but it doesn't matter to Booker T. He just wants to keep killing Robert Rude. Wow, one shot after another. 
And I'm getting word that we're gonna try and follow this action. The double count out is the call by a referee, Slick Johnson. But now it's an opportunity for Booker to gain more of that revenge. Caught him from behind. Here comes Booker, what a chop. While Booker T not stopping, he's just, he's thought about this moment every single day since it's happened. How oh, right into the concrete wall, right into the bricks. And he is in total control, Robert Roode, fighting back. Nice right by Robert Roode. Yeah, Roode tries to fight back, momentarily turns it around in his favor, and then he just took Booker and he threw him right into the wall. You can see there, Robert Roode trying to get into the car and get out of the way, but Booker T doesn't allow him. He comes right in and desperation shot right there by Robert Roode. Uh oh, Rude's got Booker now by the head. Throws him into the steel outside. That's, that's Peyton Banks in the driver's seat of that getaway car. He just took Peyton Banks, flung her right out of the driver's seat. Come on, Rude. Oh, again, and speeds a away. Move, what a cowardly move. He throws Peyton Banks into the way of Booker T and drives away. Yeah, a cowardly yeah. move. But after everything yeah, that we've seen from Robert Rude, I don't think we could expect anything less. The lust for money, power, and gold. You win the belt, you're gonna have it all. Success, money, you're gonna be the man. With that is the power. The sin that can drive some to extraordinary levels. I wanna make you, and against all odds, in the angle cage match for the title, the special guest enforcer. To get that sweet taste. You help me defeat Christian Cage, and you become a member of the Angle Alliance. Get all the perks and privileges in Karen. Now listen, I brought you all together tonight because I have a huge announcement to make. It's so huge, well, you're gonna you know love what? it. You know what? It better be good. Karen, Karen, please sit down. You're gonna love it, trust hey, me. Hey, Kurt, is this about our strategy in the main event? In a minute, AJ. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm oh, sorry, you, oh, you just, Kurt Angle Could you just himself. sit down and, 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 and just let me explain no. what I have to say here? Karen, Karen. No, I know I've been neglecting you as of, as of late. Yeah, I know that, that's okay? an understatement. Okay, I've been ignoring you. I've been neglecting you. Yeah. Well, I know I've been thinking about myself and the TNA Always. World Heavyweight Championship. I understand yep. that. Well, what I've decided to do, after I beat Christian Cage tonight for the title, this Thursday night on Impact, in the middle of the ring, in front of millions of fans watching at home. You and I, together, are going to renew our wedding vows. Yeah. Is yeah, that great please. or what? <laughs> I love, love it. it. Did you think about it? I other thought of it all by world? myself, yeah. Oh my God, I love vows. it. Mm. That's great. See, Thank you. Once again, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Everybody's happy. I am so glad you're happy. This is, this is great, this is I'm great. Good. I am so oh. excited, wait, wait, wait. I am so excited, I'm gonna go start making plans. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> this is great, with my wife on my side. Now, all I have to do is concentrate on my match. Now, I want this right here, because Christian Cage, I want you to hear this. Christian, tonight is your last shot. I beat you last month, but you claim that AJ Styles screwed you. Well, Christian, you may be a great politician, and a great manipulator, getting your next shot this month, right here at Against All Odds. But I'll tell you this, this will be your last shot. Because after this, after I beat you for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, you will abide by my rules, my kingdom. And I have a little message for you, Samoa Joe. I want you to stay the hell out of my way. Because tonight, it's gonna get real. It's gonna get damn real. They have taken beating after beating, week after week of unrelenting punishment, dished out by a team of sadistic thugs whose only goal is to destroy everything they stand for. And now, a proposition has been made. And against all odds, a hardcore street fight. Well, if the X Division loses, the X Division must be abolished. But if Team 3D loses, they must get their weight under 275 pounds. The fate of everything they have worked so hard to build now lies in the hands of the Motor City Machine Guns and Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, as they take on Team 3D and X Division Champion Johnny Devine in a street fight. This Sunday, the X Division must truly battle against all odds as they try to regain the X Division Championship. And if they lose, the entire X Division goes away forever! 
the survival of the X Division is at stake as Team 3D and Johnny Divine battle the Motor City Machine Guns and the Black Machismo Jay Lethal in a hardcore street fight. Tonight may mark the end game for what these men have been demanding for four months. We heard it loud and clear. Decimate, destroy, and abolish the X Division. Brother Ray, tonight you may get that very opportunity. You must be new. Keep your mouth shut and keep your ears open. Hardcore street fight. Enough said. Machine guns, machismo. Have you really given this match much thought? Do any of you have what it takes to win a match like this? Do any of you have the will to win a match like this? Most importantly, do any of you have the heart to win a match like this? Machismo, we give you credit. You got guts. You got balls. You don't have this title, but you got heart. And heart is 50% of the job. Machine guns, we wish we could say the same about you. You'd rather sit there and go like this than come out and go like this. You don't look like pro wrestlers. You don't act like pro wrestlers. And you've got no respect for the pro wrestling business. And maybe that's why we don't respect you. You see, win, lose, or draw tonight, Team 3D goes down as one of the greatest teams that ever existed. Win, lose, or draw tonight, machine guns, you're just another flash in the pan tag team. And your 15 minutes of fame is just about up. Ha. Oh, my brother, testify! So much at stake in this six-man hardcore street fight, including, yes, the X Division title, because whichever wrestler takes the fall, they will become X Division champion. Let's break it down with the X Factors. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, yes, they have totally focused their attention on eliminating the X Division. Tonight, they can accomplish that task by simply winning this hardcore street fight. However, if Team 3D loses tonight, Brother Ray, Brother Devon, they will be forced to weigh in at 275 pounds or less if they are continuing to compete in TNA. And imagine the pressure on the shoulders of Machismo and the guns if they lose tonight. The X Division's history, this could be the last X Division match ever in TNA. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a one fall six man tag team hardcore street fight where the wrestler who takes the fall is the X Division champion introducing team number one first from Elizabeth, New Jersey, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal. His tag team partners from Detroit, Michigan, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley, the Mobile City Machine Guns. Well, Mike, you mentioned it. If one of these three are able to get the pin on 3D or Divine, the X Division is alive. And that man will be the expedition chair. And their opponents, first from New York City, Brother Ray and Brother Devon, Team 3D! Their tag team partner from Calgary, Canada, the defending TNA X Division champion, Johnny Levine! We talked about that incredible pressure, the responsibility on the shoulders of the guns and Black Machismo, and here they go. They went right by the broadcast table. Yes, and they face to face, head to head, met Team 3D as they came down the entrance ramp. I never expected that. Look out, here comes Machismo and Brother Ray right here at the broadcast table. Oh, Machismo leaning those big shots, those right hands to the top of the head. 
Wow, what shot after another. Hey. I'll tell you what, if they didn't get motivated by that speech that Brother Ray gave, nobody can get motivated. And man, they decided to come right out after him. As you see, the split screens were going to try to follow all the action. But it's already going haywire here as everybody is involved with somebody. As you see, Saban and Johnny Devine. Alex Shelley right now is with but well, Brother Ray is in the ring with, with Jay Lethal. And you can see Lethal right on top of the head. I mean, just the nature of this match, the six-man hardcore street fight. Throw out the rules. Let them decide it. Let them settle it once and for all. But at the same time, Don, it's going to be so difficult for us to try and document this, as well as our TNA cameramen. We're doing our damnedest to try and follow the action here. When they got three separate fights that have broken out all over the building, it's next to impossible. Yeah, I apologize because sometimes things are happening right in front of us. And you might be seeing something else on the screen. It's nice double suplex teamwork right there on Brother Ray. That's it. Use my sign. Well, he's got it in his hands. Black Machismo, Jay Lethal is yes, so Calval looks Whoa. unapprovingly. Did you hear that fun? I'll tell you what, I don't know what that side's made of, but it's not paper, that's for sure. As you can see, he's pulling it out of there. Look at that, a dead end street sign. Well, wow. We hope it isn't a dead end for the entire X Division tonight here at Against All Odds, but that's the possibility that looms because yes, the entire division is at stake. Watch this from inside to the ring, out. All three of them at the same time. This slingshot over the ropes as Alex Shelley goes on Brother Devon. Again, lethal after Brother Ray, and, and Chris Saban just focused on Johnny Devine. Oh, that was an incredible triple slingshot move by Shelly Saban and Lethal. Yeah, the guns in black machismo. There goes Brother Ray right into the steel, right into the guardrail, courtesy of Lethal. Saban unloading with those shots, those right hands to the side of the head of Divine. How about the aggressive tactics of the Motor City Machine Guns and Jay Lethal? And they just absolutely came at him. Just absolutely just relentless in their in their start. And they have dominated Team 3D. They have dominated Johnny Devine. And look at that. As they send Brother Ray and Brother Devon, and then man, they just crunch Johnny Devine in the middle. Well, we saw that triple move earlier, ready for a triple tornado DDT. Guns and lethal all over the cover. Count here. One, two, wow, all three of them get the shoulders up at the last split second. They are in sync, Mike. That shows you how important the X Division is to these guys. It's something that they've grown up on here in TNA. It's you see now the weapon oh, getting we knew tossed they, in. Yeah, we knew they would come into play. And there you see the trash can just loaded with weapons comes in. And what the hell was that, an inflatable doll? I don't know how you're going to use that as a weapon. Blind somebody, maybe, I don't know. But you can now, see, you know, we talked about is, it, Was that the kitchen sink? <laughs> I think it was. It is the kitchen sink. Oh, why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? Everything but the kitchen sink. Well, that doesn't apply here. The kitchen sink's in the ring. Now it looks like they're going to use the trash cans on 3D and Devine. Shot to the head. Boy, what a dent in that can after it got wrapped around the head of Brother Ray. You know, we talk about the violence of barbed wire massacre. Well, this match is violent in a whole different way. It's not the flesh eating that the barbed wire is, as you see again, a pin attempt by all three. It's one of those matchups where everything can be used as a weapon that's not nailed down. Why, what would the decision be for Rudy Charles when all three go for the pin since it's whoever gets the pinfall becomes X Division champ? I guess he'd have to sort that out. Well, the kitchen sink is coming into play. And again, that only applies if the Chismo or the guns get the pin. Keep in mind, if 3D wins, the X Division is abolished. But if these guys can get the victory, not only will one of them be X Division champ, Brother Ray, Brother Devon can't wrestle unless they weigh in at 275. Saban and Shelly up on the backs of 3D. And wait a minute now, Machismo comes in, and wow, wow. that's the power game. Well, that's the experience of Team sure 3D. They, they were in a position that looked Look helpless. It looked like they, they didn't have a chance. And when you talk about improvising, that's how you improvise right there. That's how you turn things back in your favor. Bodies and weapons laid out all over the six-sided ring here and against all odds. Brother Ray gonna take a trash can lid. Oh man, did he hit Satan right across the head or what? One thing about a match like this, the longer it goes, I believe that experience that Team 3D has. Wow. 
What on earth? He just power bombed an inflatable doll. Stop. And you know that's the first time I've ever said that sentence in my life. <laughs> We've seen a little bit of everything in this business. Team 3D though in control. And you can see Brother Ray just feeds Jay Lethal and he hit him with the, the computer keyboard. Just caught Lethal with the computer keyboard and oh man. Now they are just destroying these guys. Yeah, you talk about a match that has turned a full 180 degrees. That's exactly what we've seen here in this six-man hardcore street fight. X Division, yes, it's in jeopardy. As we see, as we see 3D and Divine take control of trouble for Black Machismo. Wow, unbelievable. As you see right with Machismo, just take that crushing blow in the garbage can as Johnny Divine almost gets the pin. But somehow Machismo able to get the shoulder up, but you know what, Mike, you look out into that ring and, and you just see the devastation. You see all the hard work done by the guns and, and Jay Lethal early on. It's all changed, and uh -oh. now look at this. They're just holding him up there. Oh, save it just in time. And here comes Alex Shelley, both are fighting. But thank God for Black Machismo, Jay Lethal. He was totally defenseless, and Brother Ray had that kendo stick in his hand. Now Devon charges at the guns who move out of the way. Double kick to the gut. Here goes Devon for the ride. Well, they had to work together. They're doing it right now. Wow, that elbow coming out of the... Oh, and he uses Saban as he uses him as a, as a bull, but he just goes right in with there. They do the high-low. Man. Pin. Here we go. Devon shoulders down. Two count only before he rolled him. I thought that high-low might have gotten the guns to victory. Well, it's one of those that, that they're going to have to try to steal it if they can. It's, you can't beat him in the power game, you know, that's you can. obvious. You absolutely can in the long run goes. Again, this is the kind of a matchup that Team 3D loves, and they took their eye off Brother Ray for a second, and he made them pay. I guess that's easy for us to say, Don, sitting here at the broadcast table, not inside the ring with the emotions that, that get into your, your mind. The responsibility is lovely to see that. Man, there's a 3D as they put it on. Chris Saban and that, that combination move that they do so well, but look at Shelly, just fighting back, and look at that. He just gets fed right into another 3D. Bam, bam. Watch Lethal out the lights. Springboard drop kick for Devon. But then when he turns Whoa. around, Brother Ray turns him completely inside out with that clothesline. Wow. That was inside out, upside down. Wow. I mean, I've never seen a body go that many directions at once. That is the power of Brother Ray and Brother Devon. And look at Lethal just laid out in the middle of that ring. Potential here for the X Division to be abolished. Just when it looked like the guns and Lethal were in control. They hit the high low on Brother Devon, but from that point going forward, the power, the raw, pure strength of Team 3D has proven the difference, and you'll see here that Brother Ray, he's just challenging Machismo to get up to his feet. I look out across the ring, I see Alex Shelley in front of me just lying down on his back. Chris Saban on another side, he's lying down, and they're just, they're taking such wicked oh, shots as, as Jay Lethal just doesn't have any help. He's in the middle of the ring, and you can stop. see SoCal now screaming stop. and crying. Did she you say, know, stop she, this? Oh, she, she, I mean, but, I, I know she cares for Black Machismo, Jay Lethal. But I mean, we got to think about what's at stake here. And, you know, there's no quitting Lethal, that's for sure. Wow! Oh, did he give him the double gun? He sure did, buddy. He gave him the twin gun salute. And all it did was get him another smash on the head with a trash oh, come can. Come on, uh, Val. He's trying to stop it. Look at her. I mean, uh, don't, don't let the emotions get the better of you, Val. Oh, you can just see her crying as she's seeing oh, God. oh, man! Come on! Brother Ray just got her by the hair! And he Run. pulled her in! With, come on! We don't put up with this kind of crap here! And keep this in is... mind the guns in, they're down! They can't help! Come on, we don't we don't need to see this! Oh no! He's got a cheese grater! Get the hell out! No! He's no! Oh, look oh, at that's him now! That's sick! Oh, that's he's... sick! He just humiliated him! He's Anyone got... that he can! Thank God! Jay Lethal took the cheese grater. And hit him in the right spot. He just drilled him with it, you know where. And Lethal momentarily goes to check on SoCal Val. Like you say, right in the beams. And here he goes. Oh, what a hurricane run by Batista. Jay Lethal snaps it off. I mean, it was just seeing SoCal Val in harm's way. He beat Brother Ray to the top. 
He beat Brother Rain in the shot. Two. Got no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. I, I think just two because d pulled out Rudy Charles. Just in time. I mean, Brother Rain known for swinging that chair. Uh-oh, here comes Lethal. What an effort by Jay Lethal as he's doing this on his own. It's one on three right now as he's doing everything he can, and there he sits Divine over. Back body drop for Divine, and boy, you're right. Saban and Shelly are both laid out on the floor. It's, it's one on three, and he caught Brother Ray. Here we uh, go. Count. One, two. Oh, man, so close again. That's twice I thought he had him. Twice. Oh, lethal on the bird of pulling what would have been an incredible upset here. Magnified even more by the fact that his two tag team partners are laid out unconscious. Divine in. Lethal Meet the combination. combination. Here, Here we go. go. One, two. Oh, Divine able to get the shoulder up. What's he got to do? He can't keep this up any longer. Nice kick. He's unbelievable. One, two. Again, he can't quite finish it, and it's going to keep getting harder. But we saw him snap. We saw how that was in danger. Oh, oh. Full Nelson. Sit down. Power Bob. I think uh, he's done. What? No way. Oh, man. This guy's got heart. This guy's got heart. He's a true X Division champion. That was amazing that Black Machismo was able to kick out at two. You can see the reaction from Val. And Val, we can't blame you. I know you're emotional. All the hell that you had to go through in this match. And here come the table into play again. This is 3D's trademark. And again, what can Lethal do? He's still in that ring by himself. After the beatdown on Saban and Shelly. The vicious shots they've taken. They're still knocked out in front of us and they can't help out as you see Lethal in the middle. Oh, but he ducks and sends Devon flying. Yeah, they caught, oh, look at that. He caught Brother Ray with that Enzigiri kick. Here comes Divine in. He's got the street sign and he's gonna position the table into place. Boy, bodies laid out all over the arena out here on the floor. Divine's got the sign, look out. Oh man, but he missed it. And he catches the table instead and now leads to what a shot! What a shot on the current X Division champion! And maybe the last X Division champion of Divine! And now he goes up! He's got him on the table! Here he goes! Here comes the elbow! Can he hit it? Wow, he hits it perfectly! Finish it! One, two, three! Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is the Motor City Machine Guns and the new TNA X Division Champion, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal! Ladies and gentlemen, this pay-per-view is entitled Against All Odds, and that's exactly what we have just seen. What an incredible performance. A one-man gang-style performance by Black Machismo, Jay Lethal. His tag team partners, the guns, totally taken out of this match, and he's able to amazingly, against the numbers game one on three, pull it out, get the win, and he is X Division champ again. Not only was he able to save the X Division, he's able to wear the gold once again, but think about that. You said it, Mike. If there was ever a definition of against the odds, here it is right here. The elbow in the air, smashes Divine through the table, and Jay Lethal able to get the pin and end this train of terror by Team 3D. Yes, and the X Division still alive as we see the embrace between SoCal Val and Black Machismo. Brother Ray holds that X Division title high overhead, but no, you're gonna have to turn that belt over. Yeah, to the rightful, to the true champion. Lethal's gonna take it on his own. He just slingshots right over the rope on top of Brother Ray so he can get a hold of that belt in his hands. And Brother Ray, you've got to respect what he's done in that ring tonight. Well, this is your opportunity, Jay Lethal, to soak in the crowd reaction, the celebration. Sanjay Dutt looks like he's even coming out here to join in as well. He had a championship belt already in the ring. As he wants to celebrate with his great friend, Black Batista, and you know, Sanjay Dutt, how important was this match for somebody like him? Sure. A match where the X Division has been a, a place for him to showcase his talents, and he's able to celebrate into the ring. X Division, yes, it's still alive. X Division saved because of one man, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal.
The lust for money, power, and gold. You win the belt, you're going to have it all. Success, money, you're going to be the man. With that is the power. The sin that can drive some to extraordinary levels. I want to make you, and against all odds, in the angle cage match for the title, the special guest in to get that sweet taste. You help me defeat Christian K and you become a member of the Angle Alliance. Get all the perks and privileges in Karen. Whether it satisfies one's ego. I am the champ. Security. They know that you're money, man. Everybody knows that you're money. Or perhaps their own sense of entitlement. Nobody's going to take this away from me. But once they obtain their beloved objective, it only creates the desire for more. What does the Samoa Joe want. For every year I'm here, I get paid 15% more than Kurt Angle. Because we can always have more. And we will always want more. Tonko said he wants to do what's best for Tonko. So do I. It will drive men who once had honorable intentions to do dishonorable things. Man, it's great to be Kurt Angle. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> Just to satisfy their need. That one most basic of needs. Greed. The instant classic Christian Cage takes on the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship with Samoa Joe as the special enforcer. Christian Cage tonight one more time for the TNA World Heavyweight title against Kurt Angle. A lot more questions than answers as we stand here tonight. But sir, it would appear to me that you know more than you're letting on. That's how it would appear. That's how it would appear. You know something, you're stating the obvious because it's no secret that Christian Cage does know more than everybody else. The only thing I don't know is who the hell are you? Do I know you? Are we friends? Should I call security? Should I buy you some Rogaine? What's the deal? I'm, I'm Scott Hudson. Back that, 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 that's great. That's great. I hope it works out for you. It's like this. It's like this. The cards have all seemingly fallen into place. We seem to know where everybody stands, and that's great. But at the end of the day, the only thing that truly matters is the World Heavyweight Championship. As for Samoa Joe, the special enforcer referee, look, it's no secret, it's no secret that myself, Samoa Joe, and Kurt Angle, to put it politely, have never seen eye to eye. But Joe, all I ask, all that I ask of you is that you come to that ring tonight and do your job. Do what you're getting paid to do. You see, we've all heard you yapping and yapping and yapping and running your mouth how you want a title shot, how you deserve a title shot. And you know what I say to that? Joe, I say you're right. You do deserve a title shot, but not tonight. Because tonight belongs to me. Tonight belongs to the Instant Classic. Tonight belongs to all my peeps in Greenville, South Carolina. Tonight... Christian Cage walks to the ring and makes his title official. The champ becomes the official world heavyweight champion for the third time. If you don't know, now you know. Are you ready for our main event tonight at Against All Odds? Yes, it's time for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship matchup. We're gonna break it down first with those, yeah, those raw numbers for the tail of the tape. And when you check out those numbers for both champion and challenger, you can see just how evenly matched both Christian Cage and Kurt Angle really are. And of course, so many high profile championship matches through the years. Last month, Angle retained the title when AJ stabbed Christian in the back, return match a natural. In an effort to appease Samoa Joe, management has offered the title shot and a new contract if Joe would accept the duties as special guest enforcer. Both Kurt Angle and Christian Cage realize the power and strength in numbers. They understand the importance of strong backup. Who will prevail tonight? Christian's coalition or Angle's alliance? Well, one thing you can't argue about is the choice of Jim Cornette of Special Enforcer. Who better? in the Samoan submission machine to make sure this match is right down the line, to make sure that nobody does any underhanded tricks, nobody tries to take advantage of a referee. 
if Samoa Joe can't do it, then I don't know who can. And when you think of the history of Samoa Joe with not only Kurt Angle, but also with Christian Cage, he's perfect, Mike, in my mind, to be the special enforcer in this World Heavyweight Championship. Rematch time for the instant classic Christian Cage. On the verge of victory at final resolution. Shocked when AJ Styles attacked him from behind, enabling Angle to retain the gold. Absolutely natural that he gets the return bout, the rematch. And boy, when you factor in the special enforcer, Samoa Joe, who has promised on that he will call it directly down the middle, Christian Cage has to feel like this is his opportunity to once again wear the gold, to once again become the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Well, after what happened, after what happened with AJ Styles, you know deep down, Christian Cage is happy to see Samoa Joe in that ring. He knows after he wins the belt, he'll have to deal with Joe later. But right now, he wants to make sure Joe is there to make sure the ref is on the line. The Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle is headed down the entrance ramp. Earlier tonight, we questioned whether Kurt Angle was going to be able to maintain his focus on this matchup. Wife Karen joins him now. Boy, she was all over him, but after a little conference with JB, they came to an understanding. I guess they're going to renew their vows this Thursday night on Impact. That puts a smile on the face of Karen Angle, and at the same time, it enables the TNA World Heavyweight Champion to direct all of his attention on the task at hand, that task being the instant classic Christian Cage, and Kurt Angle also had some words for Special Enforcer Samoa Joe. Let's send it to the ring. Let's send it to JB for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Andrew Thomas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Greenville, South Carolina, it's time for your Against All Odds main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the challenger. He stands in the corner to my left. He weighed in this morning at 232 pounds and comes to us from Tampa, Florida, by way of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is the challenger, the instant classic, Christian Cage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, staying in the corner to my right. He is accompanied to the ring tonight by his lovely wife, Karen. He weighed in this morning at 232 pounds and comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is a 12-time World Heavyweight Champion and professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist. He is the current reigning and defending TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Kurt Angle. Boy, that's a look of cockiness. Ladies and gentlemen, your special guest enforcer for this match, he is the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. Whether it be cockiness or whether it be confidence, you can see that Kurt Angle is feeling it tonight, gets right into the face of special guest enforcer. Samoa Joe, who drops down to the arena floor, 
And Samoa Joe's got to keep his eyes on anything that goes on around the ringside area, including the potential for interference by one Karen Angle. Well, speaking of Karen Angle, you mentioned it earlier. You can see a different look in Karen Angle's eye, knowing that he's pleased his wife, and he took care of that problem about her being upset. And I say this with respect, but any man who's married, and I know that we are, we know how bad it can be when the other half is upset with you about something. And believe me, they'll make sure you know about it and you can't concentrate until you fix the problem. Well, obviously, by good advice from JB, Kurt Angle fixed the problem. Yeah, Jeremy Borash with the assist, and you can see that Angle now totally focused on the task at hand. Oh, he and Christian tie up, and referee Andrew Thomas gonna try and get these two to break because they're up against the ring ropes, and now Thomas gets in and separates champion and challenger. These two, I mean, these are the two kind of wrestlers that you can watch every single night. They're both just so good. They're so professional. They're two of the best this business has ever seen, and this, in my mind, is what a heavyweight championship is all about. Angle says, we're gonna take it back to the basics. Nice go behind by Angle. Takes Christian high up into the air and crashes him down to the mat. And now it's an opportunity here for Kurt Angle to show off some of those great amateur moves that Don, that, that he has used throughout the years when he became Olympic gold medalist. Look at these go behind. I had flashbacks of Atlanta right there. I mean, you could just see it. I mean, there it was. That's what he does best, and he's gonna do what he can to, to grind Christian Cage, wear on Christian Cage, make Christian Cage tired, and look at it, he's relentless as he goes right after him, he keeps him in the headlock and flips him over. Boy, he is right on him, isn't he? After that shoulder block, once again goes back to the side headlock. Takes Christian down, and you can see that he's just applying that side headlock with a little bit extra pressure. One thing, though, about Christian Cage, and the word that comes to mind is coming. I mean, really is crafty. He's just always able to, to find an opportunity to turn things in his favor. And if there's anybody that can outsmart you, it's Christian Cage. Yeah, and if you don't believe him, just ask him. He'll be the first to tell you. Off the leapfrog, Sweeney missed the clothesline by the challenger. Champion explodes once again with the shoulder. And Boy, look at him strut around the ring, and yeah, Karen Angle's pretty cocky and confident, just like her husband. Wow, she's feeling pretty, pretty bold there. No, I guess knowing that, you know, she's gonna have some nuptials uh, coming up. Excuse me? Gonna <laughs> have some nuptials or something here this Thursday. Oh, yeah, the renewal of vows. That's right. Now this time it's Christian who grabs the side headlock and neutralizing the champion Angle. Kurt gonna try and get back up first to his knees, then back up to his feet, so that he can even the score and, and try and counter and try and reverse this side headlock. Shot to the midsection, wet to the gut, backdrop suplex, almost into a pin attempt that time, but you'll notice there that Christian was able to move his weight just in the right position so that Angle didn't keep his shoulders down in the mat, and Christian goes back in control. He never let go. That was the main thing. A lot of guys would let go when Angle hits him in the stomach like that. When Angle's able to sidestep him like that, he never let go of the head, and he was able to get his base. But you can see, though, Kurt Angle able to get out of it. What an uppercut to the chin after the boot to the gut. Oh, nice, nice speed. And wow, got him in the headlock and flipped him over himself. Christian Cage never gets flustered out there, Mike. Notice now how in addition to the side headlock, he's using his leg strength to scissor the arm of Kurt Angle. And we had that close-up look of Samoa Joe, the special guest enforcer, out of the ringside area. And I have to tell you, in a match of this importance, in a match with the high stakes, like the TNA World Heavyweight Championship on the line, you love having that extra set of eyes around the ringside area, that's exactly the case with Samoa Joe as the special well, enforcer. Well, look at him. You know he's hoping somebody tries to pull something. Samoa Joe's the kind of person that he don't want to just sit there and watch this. He wants somebody to try something underhanded so that he can go in there and, and do some enforcing, if you know what I mean. From the middle rope, here comes Christian Cage, and Angle catches him in mid-move. Says, no way, not tonight, and tosses him high overhead. Oh, unceremoniously just drops him right down to the mat. As Christian gets back up to his feet, wow. Kurt charges in, but that time he did outsmart the champ. Well, he's just got such ring awareness. He realized where that ring post was, and he realized that Kurt Angle was coming like a freight train. He used that momentum. Kurt Angle crashed that shoulder. Look at it. He's up top. He's on top 
of the ropes. What's he gonna do? Wow, he comes down and what impact. What impact on the champion. What a high risk move by Christian Cage. But I think the challenger realizes that if he's gonna be successful against someone like a Kurt Angle in this title match, as we take another look at Christian going airborne and then crashing down with all of his weight onto the champion, Kurt Angle. I think he realizes if he's gonna win the title, he's gonna have to pull a lot of the tricks out of the bag, not be afraid to go high risk. And he hopes it will be high reward. Oh, he is, though. He's one of those that he, he understands when the opportunity is there. So many people miss an opportunity. Christian Cage won't. If the door opens, he'll run right through it. But one thing about it, Kurt Angle's not oh. just a normal opponent. Look how he just grabbed the ankle, flipped him out the middle of the ring, and Christian Cage oh. hit that shoulder. It looked like he popped his shoulder. Holy cow! Oh, I saw that as well. And you'll notice that Samoa Joe has left the chair at the entrance ramp and is now pacing around the ring because I think Joe, he's about as nervous as all of us here at Against All Odds in anticipation of what's going to happen in this TNA title match. Angle senses that he's got this matchup turned in his favor. Going to hit the suplex and immediately off that suplex goes for the pin and gets a two count. Right back to it again. And once again, referee Thomas counts two. I mean, it, keep watching to see what the, what the shoulder situation is a Christian Cage. If he's losing, if he doesn't have use of one of his wings, it's, there's no way you're going to beat the Olympic gold medalist in a championship match. And I mean, he he landed on that rough. He landed on hard. But if anybody can fight through it, Christian Cage is one of those guys. But vicious shots. Now look at this. Kurt applying the pressure on the back of the head right in the rough. Uh -oh. oh, you can see Joe got up. He didn't like it. The physical presence of the guest enforcer, Samoa Joe, comes into play. Referee Andrew Thomas was trying to count Kurt Angle off of that move, giving him a five count. Joe wasn't going to settle for it as he immediately popped up on the apron. Champ reels off the right hand. Challenger shoots Angle off into the ropes. And man, Angle caught him that time unaware. Missed with the clothesline. Angle put on the brakes, waited, oh! and then elevates Christian overhead to the floor. That's a belly to belly for you. Holy cow. And that's also showing you the strength of Kurt Angle to take him like that. And I mean, he cleared the ropes by a few feet. He just sent him flying. Wow. Oh, look how happy Angle, the 12-time champion, is with what he's just done. And again, Don, not another good landing for Christian Cage. And you can see it as well as I that he is favoring the shoulder. And Angle's looking for a chair. He's looking for anything he can. And he's going to grab one here. And again, Christian Cage still holding that shoulder. Look at this. Joe comes over and says, no, not going to use it. That's what a special enforcer is there for. Uh oh. Oh man. Angle Whoa. pushes Joe. Hey, Joe just knocked him right over. Just knocked him right on his backside. Well, Kurt Angle needs to concentrate on Christian Cage, not worry about the Samoan submission machine. And all that did was give Christian Cage enough time. And, it, and, and hurt shoulder or not, he's got some shots to the head. Boy, we talk about all the experience that Angle has in these high profile, high pressure matches. That time, oh, look out! Look out for that shoulder! Oh, oh man! Just took him and rammed him right into the ring apron. I think he was going to try and set him up and, and put him into the steel post, but he still caught him in a bad way. You know what, though? Christian Cage realized it and was able to veer him off target just by about a foot or two. And it may have saved him from breaking his back. But that's what a true champion does. You have to know where you're at at all times. Kurt Angle, what he knows is, he knows he's in the driver's seat right now. Angle in the ring, stalking, pacing after Christian, who tries to fight out of the corner. The series of knife edge chops stops Angle, but just momentarily. There's the boot by Kurt. Christian taken up into the air, and he just power bombed him. And again, look at where that landing was in the corner. Power bombed him back shoulder One, first into the turn two, oh! Just a two count. I thought I, I actually thought that might be it right there. It just looked like Christian Cage has just beat up too badly and wouldn't have been able to get the shoulder up as Kurt Angle is just being relentless. Every time Christian gets some kind of a comeback started, Kurt Angle stopped it on a dime and just takes it. Oh, now look at him. Look how he's got the knee applied behind the head and then pulls the head over it. 
and at the same time, the powerful legs of the champion, Kurt Angle, squeezing the breath out of the challenger, Christian Cage, with the leg scissors. Christian gonna try and turn it around on him and try and get a little bit of leverage in his favor. He's gotta get to his feet, he's gotta power him down to break the hold, and oh, look at this! Hey. Oh, oh man, boy, that he almost was close. stole one! Almost stole it, it was a two count! Oh, wow, Kurt Angle sees it and stops it immediately, and you can see what he does when he gets these German suplexes going. Answers with one German suplex, make it two. You'll notice that his grip is still maintained around the waist of Christian Cage. Wow, look how Christian uses his foot to wrap around the foot of Kurt Angle. That's a perfect him. counter. And now he's in position. Oh, wow. God! He just flipped him all the way over. Oh, we talked about bad landings for Christian earlier. That one saw the suplex by Christian Cage take Angle up into the air, and he landed on his head, and you can see that Christian is trying to get some adrenaline behind it, trying to get back up to his feet, and let's see if he can put away Kurt Angle and win the TNA title. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. What an unbelievable. Well, if Christian Cage just reached out and now, you can just see the spark in Christian Cage's eye. I mean, he's feeling it. This is it, he doesn't know how much he's got left, or whatever it is, he's gonna put it all on the line. And Kurt Angle, wow, went right into the arms of Cage. He set him up and landed him right on his face. Cage powers Angle down. He's gonna follow up by trying to shoot him off. A quick reversal, here's the float over. Instant classic, grabs onto Angle. Got Takes it. him right there. Two, whoa, man, how close can that be? That was three. Once again, the challenger right on the verge of victory and becoming TNA World's Champion again. Christian points to the sky. That means he's headed for a high-risk move off the top. The last one really worked like a charm when he flew out to the arena floor. Let's see how he fares here, but Angle's up there to meet him. I'll tell you what I was watching, Kurt Angle. He's biting him. Ring. Wow, good move by Cage. He expected Angle to come up there, and he was ready for him. Frog splash, two, here it is. Again, Kurt Angle gets the shoulder up at the last second. Amazing series of near falls. Amazing series of two counts. Christian Cage once again on the verge of victory and becoming TNA champ, but Angle powers out before three. Off the boot to the oh, gut. Wow. Man, what an impactful shot into the corner. Christian goes chest first into that top turnbuckle. It's just the force in which he threw him into the turnbuckle. Just, it was so violent. You could see Christian Cage wobbly. He hears Angle behind him. He knows he's there. He's got him up. Oh! But he's able to counter, and that's what he does so well. Just when you think he's done, he's playing possum. And here comes Christian Cage out of the ring onto Kurt Angle. Yeah, just in a moment when I thought that Angle was going to hit the Olympic slam. A quick reversal of fortune. Christian drops down the floor, knows that he can't win the title while Kurt Angle's fighting outside or laying outside the ring here. Christian will try and bring him back in, but the fight ensues. Look out, look out, look out. Christian holding on to those ropes oh boy. for dear life with everything he's got. And look at, look at the pressure applied by the Olympic He's, he's only got one way. hand. He's only got one. Can he hold on for long? There's no way he can keep holding on. And he got both back, and now look at him. Pulling up with everything he's got, and Kurt Angle has to relent. Oh, you see the muscles tensing in both Angle and Cage. Fortunately for Christian, he's able to fight it off. Oh, he nice. went for the boots, but Angle had that scouted out. Look at he's this. got the ankle lock, but they're in the ropes. He's got the ankle lock in the ropes, and he's pulled him through. Wow, Kurt Angle. How? That's called improvising. And look at this, he just goes right around. Every chance that Christian tries to counter it, Kurt seems to get the base. Christian momentarily did break it with the forward roll, but Angle goes right back to it. And look at the positioning here, Don. He's got him dead center in the middle of the six-sided ring. Christian's got a long way to go to get the rope break, and Angle cinches in the ankle lock. Hey, Christian just dives halfway across the ring to get the break. And look how he just throws in a few extra cinches on that ankle before Andrew Thomas can get him to break it up. But now you wonder how badly Christian Cage is hurt as he was just twerking on that ankle for everything that he had. And again, Christian Cage just kind of walked back in. But again, he did it to set him up. It's amazing, but oh no, he found himself back in the ankle lock. He went for that Olympic slam. It was counted, it was reversed. Into the he got it. Christian he got it. Did he get him? No. So freaking close. On Prettier on the way, can Angle fight it off? Oh, look.
Look at that man, Angle breaks the eyes, expecting it, there it and is. there's the Olympic slam. And he retains Here's his the championship cover. Here's two. two. Wow! No nope. shoulder up. Christian Cage can reach down and find something that most men will never ever have. Karen Angle screams at referee Andrew Thomas. It's not his fault. He was just holding the count. And when he got to two, the guts, the courage, and the heart of Christian Cage enables him to kick out. They're rocking at the Bilo Center in Greenville, South Carolina, because they know how important this TNA World's title match is. And here goes Angle to the top. Could it be a moonsault? Oh, he wants to hit the backwards moonsault. Wow, he got great extension. Almost too much extension because Christian Cage saw it and was able to roll out of the way. He is so patient, Mike. He is one of those that knows he's taking a beating, but he waits for the right moment, the right opportunity, and Christian Cage is feeling it right now. The thousands here in Greenville, they're standing as one in anticipation of Christian Cage hitting this top rope move and becoming TNA champ. Here comes the instant classic to the top, but here comes Angle, quick sprint to the corner. Christian able to knock him off. Angle gonna go back to the well one more time. Oh, he got a good shot on the leg, and he was able to use it. Wow, what a suplex. Out to the road. One, two. Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. Christian Cage able to get it up in time. Wow. The, the look of disbelief that you see on the face of Kurt Angle, it's matched by the thousands in attendance here and against all odds because they thought that was going to be a three count as well. The determination that he has shown. And now look at Angle, he's parading him, cussing him, just paint rushing him, just trying to do anything he can to get him in. I'm ready here! Here it is! Here we, here go. It is. Here we go! Here it is! One, two, oh my god! How you, in hell did he get his shoulder up? You can't get any closer than that without being TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Cage hits the unprettier, but amazingly, the champ, the Olympic gold medalist, is able to power out just before the three count. Oh, and that's got a frustration. Oh, oh, God. The referee, as Christian Cage left, the referee just took a wicked clothesline. And look at this. He's got Christian the ankle He's got the ankle lock. Samoa Joe hops in. He's the special enforcer. Look and he's going to see if he taps out. He's taking over right now. He's looking at Kurt to oh. see if he untaps. Look at Angle fight through the pain. Joe says, are you going to tap? Are you going to tap, Kurt? What are you going to do? And look at Kurt. Look at that determination. He's mostly going away. He's saying, I'm not tapping. But Joe's right there in his face. And Christian Cage has it cinched in tight. And continues to crank on the ankle lock. Could you imagine if he were to beat Angle with his own submission hold? Karen willing him to the ropes, and he makes it. Well, you can see that he grabbed the rope, but then Christian Cage pulled him back, and he pulled Karen in with him. And Karen was holding on. And look at this. Joe's trying to size up the situation. Oh, she'll do anything to help her husband. Slides in and he's saying, have at it. He's saying, have at it. Oh, and now Karen's like, there's no way you're going to look at this. Don't tempt him. Oh, what on earth? She just slapped him in the face. What is she thinking? Joe's turned him loose. Christian's oh, got him measured in the corner. And you're right, Samoa Joe says, do what you have to do. Keep your eyes on Kurt Angle. Wow. What a move by Christian Here Cage. It Here it is. Two. Oh, my God. And you can see the frustration on Joe. He thought there was a pin, and now there's a midway collision. But Kurt Angle took his own wife out. And then both men go for that clothesline. And yes, both go down, and Joe's going to try and clear the ring of the lifeless form of Karen Angle. He can't have her interfering anymore at this point. He just took her down and he set her right in the chair that he was sitting in earlier as the enforcer. Referee, is that AJ? There's AJ Styles! Not again. Oh, look at this! Joe, just in time, grabs him by the ankles and slams his head on the ring apron and then flings him into the guardrail. We didn't want to see that happen again like in Final Resolution. And then Joe charges at AJ and sends AJ into the crowd. How about this? That's Samoa Joe taking care of business. Wait a minute. But now, Kurt Angle's, Angle's got a chair. Angle's got a chair. He's picked up the chair. He's going to bring it into play. The referee's knocked out. Joe what? is taking AJ and running him out of the building. But what he doesn't realize is he's in the middle of the ring. 
Kurt Angle has the chair. That steel stud up, but he misses. Oh, nice kick to the gut. Nice kick in now. Here got Christian's got it. He's got it. Oh, low blow. Kicking right the crotch. Oh, right between the uprights. What a cheap shot that was. Oh. And then cracks him across the back with that heavy chair. Unbelievable as he hit him with the metal part. Right on the back, and Christian Cage in pain. And Joe obviously has ran AJ out of the building. Karen's no longer a factor. Wait a minute! Top 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 and stop he it. stops it. Pulls the chair. Top coat, an angle. Is he gonna hit him? Wait a minute. What? What? What, what the hell is this? What is going on here? What? You've got to be kidding me. What the hell just happened? Angle doesn't even believe it. Tomko just came out. Angle's reviving the referee. What did Tomko just do? He just turned on Christian and cost him a victory. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and still TNA heavyweight champion of the world, Kurt Angle. What, what just happened here? Tomko came out. It looked like he was gonna help Christian Cage. The same Tomko who embraced, who hugged Christian on impact this past Thursday. Obviously, he's still up. I just can't figure this out. Why on earth would he help Kurt Angle after this? Unbelievable as you see Kurt celebrating with that championship belt in the ring. I don't have any answers for you either. Ladies and gentlemen, Tomko may be for Tomko, but for whatever reason, tonight and against all odds, Tomko was for Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle remains TNA World Heavyweight Champion. God, I never saw that coming. What is real? What is real? What is real? What is fantasy? What is fantasy? What is fantasy? What is fantasy? A thin line separates the two. A thin line separates the two. The same with good. The same with good and bad. Pain. Pain. Pain and pleasure. Right and wrong. Right and wrong. Right and wrong. And when that line is blurred. And when that line is blurred. And when that line is blurred. Anything can happen. Anything goes. Anything goes. What awaits on the other side? What awaits on the other side? Find out. Find out. Find out. Find out. Find out. Find out. TNA Wrestling. TNA Wrestling. TNA Wrestling. Cross the line. TNA Wrestling, cross the line. This has been a presentation of TNA Entertainment.